So I have everybody here. So you walk into a room and die. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. Like last I remember there was undeath and death. Yep. Separately. Uh, I had a choice to make. One thing real quick. There you go. Think. Not loading. Well, I see a map. Oh, this is outside the tabletop simulator. Oh. Yeah. This is. Oh, I'm that guy. I ha I suddenly have much bigger muscles and and tattoos. Hmm. I'm not complaining. Do I do I get a strength bo boost for this? Yeah, sure. You get point one strength boost. You awesome. the rest of that point nine. We'll get another point, dude. I'm 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 working it. You know it. Boosting gains. <laughs> All right. So last time we left for Christmas, uh, and. You have found all right, a all right, all right. tomb of some sort. Uh, it seemed to be a Netherese tomb. You'd explored a few rooms. And then finally, you had come upon a hidden room here. Where after some exploration, you had found some things in an invisible chest. And then you had interrupted or woken up or something. Some wraith, some malevolent undead spirit of this place. Seems intent on draining your life force, so... She apparently can leave. You're in the middle of this. As oh, um, that's right, Jim Jar is here as well. As you and Jim Jar had tried to defeat this Ruth. Ooh, realized all the lines are like right above the table. Anyway, tried to defeat this Wraith. At ease, you had looked inside the sarcophagus that came out of, found a gilded hilt you grabbed it you heard a voice in your head saying that it could help you but you must attune come back to your decision um so when we say attune are we looking like uh f sharp or uh just kind of a g scale <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. More of a G scale. Just gonna. Um, hmm, okay. Uh, yeah, I am going to going to accept to attune to this weapon. Okay. So, in the midst of this combat, you grab this weapon and you attune to it, and you hear the voice tell you, "Thank goodness, now I can finally be free." <laughs> And, Finally, what? What? Yep. And a blade of light springs out of the hilt of this sword. I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, are you familiar with what a sun blade is? No, but uh, okay. Is it like a lightsaber? It sounds like a. Lightsaber. It is like a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's actually like an old. Uh, I don't know if it is even in rank and bass animation, but there's like an old animation where, like, towards the end, like they've gone through this odyssey and they've gotten like this hilt there's no blade there at all well he like forces power and essentially attunes to it and like it puts out a like an outline of a blade kind of thing but is it something that's like visible light or yes um, okay as a matter of fact i'm i'm looking for the thing that i oh no wonder they uh, misspelled it <laughs> that's sure that checks out uh yep okay so let me pull you item card here because we actually have nice item cards. Oh, good. I'll be able to write all the details down. There you go. Item number 207. <laughs> <laughs> here you are. Thank you. So you are immediately aware of these properties as you have attuned to it. So this bright light just flows out of this blade. This entire room lit up in bright light. And this wraith just shrieks away at this 
shrinks away from this sunblade. Okay. Probably for good reason. And I believe it is your turn. Okay, um, well, since that seems useful, I will go ahead and attack with that. Um, gonna give me a hot second here to get used to whatever this thing does. Yes, now I guess the big question is, are you proficient in types of swords? Your short sword or long sword? Yes. I okay. specifically built and took the, the feet to be able to ha uh, use a long sword. Okay, then you are proficient in this one. Fantastic. There's a plus two strength modifier above my existing strength modifier. Right, so this weapon has just a straight plus two on it, and that's why it's got that static two in there. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. <sighs> I'm full if I'm proficient. It's also technically. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's eating my soul. Don't worry. I'm yeah, I am yeah, already well right. aware of that. Nothing comes for free. Uh so twelve plus two and plus two, that's sixteen. Sixteen. That has struck the wraith. This undead wraith. Okay. Yeah, compared to the normal. Yeah, living wraith. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it says 1d8 and then in parentheses d10. Oh, yeah. So long swords have this thing where if you're wielding them with one hand, the d8, if you are two handed wielding them, it's a d10. Oh, okay. So typically I'm a sword and shield fighter, so it'll be one handed. That makes sense. And so six plus two plus two, so nine um, radiant damage. Nine radiant. All right. So this thing. So you strike this thing, and unlike the other weapon attacks that you have been hitting this thing with, all of this radiant damage goes through and just burns part of it away. E. Messy. And the sword says, "Well struck. Thank you for so much for freeing me from this." I am Dawnbringer, and I am here to slay the evils of this world. That sounds good so far. Mm -hmm. You and I will get along quite nicely. And the first evil thing I can think of is yourself. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody's got evil. <laughs> you have evil, darkness so. in your heart. <laughs> exactly. <explode>. There is. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the light shall heal your scars. All right. Um, so, good job, Cadiz. Uh, next up, or not. We'll do task and how about that? Next up, Liam brings in the action. So you see oh. Aston with this sword, and you uh, all of you were able to hear now that telepathic message. Oh. Okay. Uh, <sighs> well, uh, hmm. I don't know that I actually have any spell slots left. Um, or, no, they reset, didn't they? Uh, they have not since last game. Not since last game, but since... Um, since the initial fight with the drow, yes. Okay, so, so they... I, I No, because I... Right. Okay. I am going to... It's either going to be that or that. Uh, no, it's going to be that because I don't have the spell slot for that. Hmm. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to have to hold my action because there is not enough room in this room for me to cast anything without causing collateral damage. Mm, okay. Yeah, and? <laughs> What's the most explosive thing you have right now? Hit it. 
<laughs> I, I don't okay. think you actually want me to do that. <laughs> no, not so much. <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, I've got you... this pocket full of TNT. I could just lob at yeah. the enemy. It's already lit. Like be fine. Um, is there a particular spell you want to ready? Is, um, uh, it would be the um, flame hands, burning hands. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. All right, in that case, you ready that and move to Mark. Okay, I'd die. Good. <laughs> Good? I thought you weren't one of those GMs. I see how this works out. Yes. Um, so, what I'm thinking here, is I, I got a couple of options, but what I want to do most of all is kill this guy. Okay. Unfortunately, what I really want more than anything else is to import my mech and then use it in the game. All so right. I can't do that. I'm going to just pull in, uh, let's go with a blue marble. There we go. Three. Now, unfortunately, according to my notes here, I have already burnt all three of my keys. So those are all in the spent category, which sucks. It does suck. That means I can't do anything whatsoever. I, I'm just going to sit down and die. Can't you can't hit it? Actually, what I'm trying to figure out is where the hell is my ability that I just got? I don't write it down. Hang on. Your the burning eyes that you did last time. One second. Okay, that's just a bonus action. That's not a key ability. Okay. Right. Never mind. I thought that was a key. Look, it's been a little bit. Okay, give me a break. I mean, I believe you have certain amount of uses on it. Uh, no. About that? <clears throat> Burning gaze. As a bonus action, you shoot a beam of fire. Blah, 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 blah. Ink, ink damage increases at every... No, I mean, that's it. As a bonus action, you shoot a beam oh, yeah. of fire from your eyes. It affects all creatures in a 5-foot wide, 30-foot long point, originating from you. They must make a dexterity throw equal to DC of 8, plus your proficiency, plus your wisdom, or take 1d8. At level 7, that increases. At level 11, increases again. At level 17, increases again. The the limitation is under the fiendish boon category, like right up above that. Fiendish boon. Oh, I didn't even see that. Okay. Well, shoot. That makes that a lot less useful. Uh, I believe okay. you still have uses left, but... I probably. Um, so, what's my wisdom fortifier? Zero. No, I'm kidding. It's two, actually. So I have three uses of that, so hang on one second. Let me get some more marbles going here. And we'll make them, you know, green, because fell. No. Six. But I've used one, I'm pretty sure, right? Yes. Are you rolling <laughs> my, my felt? Why is it not tinting? What are you trying to tint it? Green. Why is it not letting me do it? it letting me do it for the one. Uh, I see them all as green. I don't. I don't. Okay, hang on, hang on. Green. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, anyways, um, I'm sorry. Look, I'll fix this in a second. I'll, I'll OCD in a minute. <laughs> see, two blue and a green. Yeah, that's what I see, too. I'm going to go ahead and, first of all, I'll try to strike this stupid thing. Okay. They're all green. Right in its stupid face. No. Uh, that is, I have no idea what my plus to hit is. I don't know anything. Why can't I just play a video game that does all this for me? God. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, that's going to be a 14. That has hit. Okay. Okay, sorry. Just verifying where all my damage is coming from here. I'm currently at a D6, I think? No, I'm at a D4. I'm at a D4. And that is two damage. Actually, that's four damage. Okay. And then as my bonus action, I will go ahead and burn it. No. So I have to make a saving throw. Uh, which is really low. I mean, that would be... Uh, God, I was just looking at those. Can I write this crap down? Am I that terrible of a player? 
Did I not save after I wrote it down? That might be what happened. Because I'm using a PDF as my character sheet. And I feel like Will Wheaton here. Well, it probably doesn't matter because I've rolled a five for my save. Well, no, that, that will not succeed. <laughs> the minimum, it's eight plus proficiency plus wisdom. I don't remember what but my proficiency, oh, it's two, so. 12? Yeah, they have to beat 12 right now. Yeah, that, that's not happening. Oh, it, I actually wrote it down. I did write it down. God damn it, I am so disorganized. Look, I haven't had a lot of sleep, okay? My whole next week is going to be busy. Dressing. I don't know where I am right Guido's now. Guido's fault. Um, okay, so it takes 1d8 FOIA damage. Which is a 5. Okay. We've moved that. Unfortunately, that is all I can freaking do. Like, I, I am can... super worthless right now. God. Level 3. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm barely even here. Uh, right. I, I cuss him out in Dwarven. So this this wraith just looks back and forth between all of these people who have suddenly sprouted new abilities and magic weapons last six seconds. <laughs> of course. And it says So Dawnbringer, you have betrayed. You are after all not loyal to a monitor. And it goes out to strike at Aston. Because, ow. No. So it materializes that shadowy sword again and tries to stab you in a place that'll make you dead. That's not nice. It has so many options for where to stab you, too. This is true. As a squishy human. It rolls. 18. <sighs> yeah, that hits. It hits? All right. Yeah. My AC seventeen. Oh, apparently he uh, does a total of thirteen points of necrotic damage to you. Ow! Miss, please make a Constitution saving throw as well. All right. Uh, 15. 15? All right. You have saved. So nothing further happens for you. Dogenberger tells you, well done. Thanks. Next on, we come to Jim Jar. Jim Jar says, this went from like 10 to 11 real quickly, but uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just uh, keep on trucking here. He tries to stab this wraith a couple times. Manages to hit once. Doing a little bit of sneaky damage. Not bad. To a tune of 10 damage. Wraith is still up as we come back to Tastin. And this time, having got a better feeling for the blade, I know a little bit more about it after one strike and one round. Mm -hmm. I.e., I read the card a little closer. So... <laughs> First, I'll roll to hit, and then we'll see what kind of magic we can do. Okay. Uh, 15. 15. Uh, 15 has hit. Okay. So, that's 1d8 plus 4 radiant, which is... So, 9. Also, in reading the card, it says if you hit something that's undead, which I'm assuming a wraith falls in that category does an additional 1d8 damage. That is correct. Okay. See, knowledge is power, kids. And not to interrupt, but uh, thank you, Lore Reloaded. He just uh, came in and cheered uh, 100 bits. So thank oh, you wow. very much. Very nice. I appreciate that. Uh, six. So a total of 15. Oof. Oof. All right. Swing Dawnbringer through this wraith. And you see, like, just like half of its body just disperse and start to fall away. So it's just the upper half now. Looks like it is barely holding its form together, but it's still, still going. And somehow, all of still the here, markers old friend. Move all the way over. I'm not dead. No, not yet. 
All right, Liam. So AOE stuff is going to be kind of difficult, it seems. I have a question. Yes. Can I climb on top of the sarcophagus? Yes. Anything is possible in the world of D&D. &E. I mean, we can't desecrate it anymore, so yeah, go for Hang it. Hang on. I suddenly magic us to Tahiti. No, okay, not quite that good. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm suddenly thinking of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and what's his name? Um, yeah. <laughs> Tahiti. Yeah, it's a wonderful, it's a magical place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the litter sarcophagus is currently off, so you kind of be like stepping on the desiccated corpse of this. Uh, I mean, he doesn't woman, care. But... He's, those boots aren't even his. Okay. Uh, Fine. You could definitely get up on there. If 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 I stand up, then I would have the height advantage to be able to do the uh, the, the spell. Uh, I see. Yeah, sure. Oh, it's the Obi Wan approach of the high ground. Well played. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, she looks up and she says, "The high ground." No, <laughs> you found my weakness. <laughs> no, 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 no. What no, she actually says is Netherese battle secret. <laughs> You underestimate my power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not uh, whiny enough. <laughs> no faith that your friends is yours. Um, so I don't actually have to roll to hit on that, but they do have a dex saving throw. Oh, my dex is pretty high. I got this. Watch this. Yeah, probably. Boom. Uh, well, 15. Uh... That makes it, yep. Okay, so I take half, I think. All right. Um... Just where it was right there. You can oh, sort your spell okay. notes. <laughs> All right, so 3d6. Um, so five damage. Five damage. Uh, is that already halved or not? Yes, that is halved. Ooh, okay. So, you get up on top of the sarcophag sarcophagus. Yeah, three times fat. And... Get up on top of the sarcophagus. Get up on top of the sarcophagus. No, don't do okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not a chant or... <laughs> and following orders. you will emit these, these flames from your hands, these burning hands. And you see the upper half, the remnants of this wraith. Dodge most of it, but the remaining amount is just too much, and it burns away and dissipates into dust. Nicely done. Ba -ba 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 yeah. <laughs> and it is silent, except for the, uh, the squ telepathic squeals of Dawnbringer, who says, Yes, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, it has been so long since I have been unleashed. Now, I'm assuming since we had done the uh, the telepathic link through uh, what's his name? Stool. Stool. I was going to say from the Toadstool guy, which makes sense. Um, do does everybody hear that, or is it since it's a sentient oh, weapon? It's everybody just around here hears that, regardless. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, okay. So it's a singing sword. Or a uh, Borderlands weapon. Yes. So, and it says, uh, Hello, friends, adventurers. Where am I? I say we drop it in the nearest lava pool. Who's with me? No, don't do that. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> I don't actually say that. So the race said you portrayed them. Was that the previous owner? Or I, your I, previous compadre? I admit I have no idea who that was. Um, Hang likely... on, I roll your lying through your teeth. I was going to say, can okay. I sense motive on a, on a, on a sword? <laughs> yeah, you can. I, I, it's, Let's do it. It has a charisma, a wisdom, and it's got stats. All right. Let's see. I got a 20. Okay. That's I don't know what flat. my stats are to add to that. In it's fact, a flat sure perception roll, isn't it? Is that uh, insight? It's an insight. insight. So it's a wisdom insight check. That's a 22 for me. Okay. Okay. Uh, 16. 16. Okay. Liam? Or are you like, yeah. Uh, I don't I mean, care enough care. to check. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah that all it's checks a sword, out. whatever. I mean, it's swords aren't his thing, okay? 
Yeah, I mean, like, your first instinct is like, wait, really? It, she seemed to know you, but you're not sensing any deception coming from this board. <laughs> now, as far as you can tell, seems to be upfront about that. Uh, but she says, um, this possibly may have been an associate, someone who knew me. I, I, forgive me, I cannot see when I am extinguished. Okay, what's the last thing you remember? The last thing I remember was the bright sun and worshippers of a monitor surrounding me, chanting, and then there was some odd magical energy and we began to plummet, to fall towards the ground. The last thing that I could see, but uh, I still have a sense of passage of time and I sense that it has been many many years actually i was just yesterday i jumped in <laughs> hey listen if we uh set you on fire will that help set like will me that... on fire i no you I... say you want to be lit like obviously we can't take you to the surface that's simply beyond our ability but we could set you on fire like can't will take that help to the surface wait <laughs> does jim jar surface? still have a torch uh jim jar doesn't i think Someone in here. I, th I think at least one of us has oh, a torch. Oh, no, no, I think Tassin does. Tassin, do you still have a torch? Uh, yes, but I haven't lit it because um, everybody else has night vision. I thought you were using a light spell. Yes. Oh, you're using... Oh, right. That's, okay. that's right. That's right. That's, that's, that's why right. I made sure I had that cantrip constantly because I'm in yeah. the Underdark and I can't... I don't have low light vision and I'm the only one who doesn't. I, actually, so better question. Can you just cast light on it as the source? So it is emitting light already. Just... Well, then why can't you see? Well, no, I oh, we we can all see quite I can, like daylight now. No, I'm, I'm talking like to the sword. Right. Oh, oh, I can right. see now. I just when I was extinguished, I could not. Oh, okay. I apologize. I was trying to help. Like it's I know funny. we dwarves can see in the night. Right? Underground? No, no, no. That's that's silly. Don't worry about that. Um, can I roll? Make me a deception uh, check. <laughs> <laughs> I roll a one. <laughs> can I roll religion to see what a monitor is? I'm not familiar yes. with the term yes. in this context. I should roll that. Too. I mean, I'm looking at one two monitors right now but i'm sure that's yes. not what that means you may roll either um yeah. history you, you can roll religion history or arcana i got 16 so that's not religion what you know what is this great and powerful uh, a monitor 13. 13 all right 13 religion and you had a 16 what'd you roll or history history okay uh 18 arcana okay well We'll start from the bottom and go to the top. So the religiously, <laughs> um, a monitor is a name that you've heard of in reference to like an old sun deity worshipped by like old humans. Okay. Uh, historically, uh, you know that uh, a monitor was a a revered being of the Netherese. There has been writings about a monitor in Netherese you know, documents. And arcanely, you know that a monitor is known to have been revered, revered, sorry, by powerful Netherese wizards. But you haven't really heard that name aside from like historical mentions, like not really a current deity as far as we know. So we don't know about the Lathander thing? Uh, None of us. That's the only real relevance to yeah, modern I mean, day would, with him, I would say. Yeah. Um, no, not, not with it. That would be a religion roll and not with that. Okay, that's fair. Crap. Why did you roll so crap? Well, <laughs> let me tell you how I roll dice. <laughs> so, oh, real actually, quick. you know what? I should make Ginger roll. I in the uh, much, in the Star Trek campaign on Mondays, the way the Star Trek adventure system is is low is good, high is bad. Mm -hmm. I've been rolling on fire over there. <laughs> Of course you haven't. I'm not actually joking. It really, I'm just re regularly getting threes, fives, eights, twos. <laughs> That's like, the problem, yeah. Cadiz. We're just playing it's your own system. <laughs> it's working out for I, me. I should have done this differently. <laughs> yep, yep. House rule, we're, we're flipping it. Oh, great. I, I roll a critical one <laughs> all the time. Natural mm. one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so um, uh, I, I'm actually going to jump in here. A monitor, right? The uh, you uh, as as a fellow 
lover and beholder of wait hang on do we get the sun thing from any of that smaller rolls we just got the sun thing yeah a monitor is of the as a fellow worshiper of the sun and and a great lover of all things bright and glowing um i'm wondering if you happen to know uh, any of the names of your fellows when you were dumped, dumped down here, like any of the, the, the fellow mages who, who plummeted with you and whatever strange thing happened that I can't actually remember if my character remembers or not, or character knows or not, I should say. Um, it says, ah, uh, you are a fellow worshiper of the sun, of a monitor? The sun is glorious and wonderful, and that is a true statement. <laughs> I'm not the most general lying. true statement you could make. <laughs> it is the most true statement I can make. If you want me to roll deception, I will. I, I, it <laughs> no, is a fine. deception. No, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> He's taking it hook, line, and sinker. Um, she says, I, and it seems like she pauses for a moment, like to think, and says, Unfortunately, I cannot pronounce their names, or at least I do not know their, the meaning behind them. They're just sounds to me. I sense that my current wielder does not know the ancient language of Netherese and. Alas, I am bound to know the languages of my wielder. That is a hell of a curse. Hang on. Odd I'm question. too stupid. Can I hold it real quick? Or does it only tell you who you're attuned to? You can hold it. It's still attuned to uh, test him, though. That's what I was curious of. And I'll, I'll go ahead and test that in character. Here's another dumb thing. Can I actually touch the blade and not burn myself to death? Uh, Good question. Because <laughs> I was try? like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and hand this to you. I'm like, okay, I'm going to... One hand on hilt, one hand on blade. Okay, hand on blade is now on fire. I would. You kind of get the sense you probably don't want to touch it. No, nope. <laughs> get a very, get a very gently. Yeah. Very um, gently. So you're gonna hand it to Tassin? No, Tassin's gonna hand it to. Or, I'm uh, sorry, me. Tassin's <laughs> gonna hand it to Mark. Yeah, Mark takes it and's like, "Hello, can you hear me still?" Yeah, uh, Mark, your hand starts burning. Okay, that's oh. cool. Can you, can you like summon this back and I, just like real quick and. Like, can you summon it to you, like God of War style or Thor it's style? Like, you go, hmm. doesn't work that way. <laughs> um, Damn it. But Don Don says have to, to you, me. I sense foul energy within you, dwarf. Oh, go to hell. Oh, oh, I toss it into the crypt. <laughs> <laughs> into the, not the crypt, the, the sarcophagus. Just, just there. there. I just got that, man. <laughs> look, she just, she, look at this. Look at this. It says foul creature on my palm. Okay, yeah, it's, it's kind of like just like quick. you like you know, touch something hot and your hand just like a little red, so it's not like yeah. damaging. Okay, never mind. I'm not, okay, I'm I'm sorry, uh, Larthendiglar, whatever your name is here. He says you've been tainted by demons. What has caused this about. to happen? Uh, there's no demons here. Uh, tell him, uh, Liam. Tell her. The All last right. demons we dealt with were uh, <laughs> back in another part of the. Uh, what are, where are we? The under what? The uh, the under dark. Under dark. Um, oh God. Oh she, no, we're in the under dark. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now she. Knows. Oh, 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 no, I, no, listen. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm telling you, the sun is amazing, and we'll get back there eventually. Let's leave this place now. We're we can't. On it. We're 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 kind of busy. Is this uh, real quick? Is this the voice that was calling for help earlier? Yes. Okay, I just want. <laughs> Is there someone else down here when you rescue? Oh yeah. my god. No. Let's leave weapon. this place, please. Yeah, hang on, hang on. We start looting. Okay. But you found the stuff in the chest last time. Oh, damn. No new loot? No, new, new loot did not just magically spring out. I got a new sword. Well, no, it, it's, it's Diablo 2. Like, we defeated an enemy. It's all junk. No, not even for a class. It's you? all gray. It's just gray items. Wraith dust. No, there's a legendary, but, you know, it's it's for like a barbarian. Oh, I hate those. Oh. That's just junk. Disenchant, disenchant. <laughs> Break it down for component parts. Yep, yep. All right, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> I am not tainted by demons. I fight demons. I'm actually upset about this in character. Like, I fight demons. I am all about destroying and defeating demons, ma'am. Thank you very much. I have seen people led down that path before. If you wish, I can cleanse the demonic taint from you. Uh, let's put a pin in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Since it's it just... went so well to get him to this point, let's maybe not just reverse yeah, I almost it. almost died on the path here. <laughs> no, it's, it's mm. okay. I, I'm, I am not corrupted. I am Let's trying. get him back to a temple first, and we'll we'll talk it over. 
Oh my God! Let's let's get out of here. Let's Jim Jarvis will say, uh, it, "It may be of note to uh, point out that there is still one door we haven't gone through." Now I slash the door open. <laughs> not waiting. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'd run over. Bam! Right. I'll roll strength. Hey. Hang on. Give me a second. I'll roll strength. Hang on. Uh, and he's right, just out of all of you. It's this one right here, by the way. Damn, that's a crap brawl. But yeah, I I, I do roll it. It's okay. like ten. I roll ten to smash it. Okay. Up. Okay. Uh, so you you smash the door open, not a problem. Stone Cold just flies open, um, and you see all ten ogres turn to look at you. Oh, yep. there no. I immediately no. unsmash um, the door closed. No, 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 no. Uh, no, this actually seems to be another tomb. Um, it looks like there is a. And this room is much larger. Is relatively speaking, there is a, mm-hmm. another. Looks like nethery sarcophagus just you kind know, of laid out in the center of this pedestal. Here. Is it is it circular like that? That's the pedestal, yeah, and the coffin. Oh, okay, okay. Often gotcha. the sarcophagus is on and top of it right there. Okay, there's so always gotta be a dais. What, what's the name of your sword again? Dawn Bringer. Dawn Bringer. D- I'm sorry, the Dawn Dawn Singer, if you could come here real quick. Okay, um, look well. no, I, I would just want to say that in the uh, cards over here, someone misspelled it and called it Drawn Bringer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. drawn t- i mean there's, there's an accuracy there you know mm-hmm. um yeah so you see canopic jars around this room stone canopic jars um there is that sarcophagus sitting on top of that like a black of marble pedestal there's <laughs> mosaics that are depicting huge floating cities among a uh, tremendous is there anything tremendous worth city. looting in here or? um unless it's in the jars or inside the sarcophagus all right, test and do me a favor and like take point here with your death dealing sword. Before you do that, can I just take a look around? Are there any engravings or anything on the sarcophagus? Yes. Mm. Are they in a language any of us know? Um, you know, ancient netherese. So, anyways, Ooh, no. so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use eyes of the grave. Oh, see if okay. there's any undead around. Ooh, good idea. Okay. Before um, you start smashing all these jars that probably have ghosts in them, look, look <laughs> getting rid of them is doing them a service. We are we are doing Amarotians' work. Amarotians, Amamonitrons, a monitor. Oh yes, the anti-monitor, of course. The Am- Ambrosia, right? Yeah, no, I know him. They're they're not the same. No, oh, okay, my bad, my bad. Uh, so you you search with eyes of the grave. You look around. You can see like like traces of like undead necromantic energy in here but like nothing 50 like, 60 like of them <laughs> just right on you and it just seems to be kind of like a, just around you. you think this is just the remnants of the wraith that you just defeated dispersing okay we, we good uh, it's clear for now but um i'll be at the ready shove the sarcophagus open all right please make a strength check uh yeah that's a fair that's a fair where's my where's my strength dice here we go I'm just using this tool because it's a toy and I got to use a toy. Yeah, strength has, yeah, just, one. Okay, one? I'm never using that again. I'm never <laughs> using that again. Where's my you, dice? You pull a hammy. Yeah, I was going to say, I pull a hammy. Good roll, son. Come up here with us. <laughs> oh, thunk. Like, I, I like to think that I, I slip off it, like, you know, when you don't have traction. And so I just kind of oh. go <laughs> fly, like, right off of it. And I smash to the ground. And then I. Demonic taint, the first sign is weakness of the limbs. Wait, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I want to roll dexterity. I'm going to do it really quick here. While you're doing that. Damn, I feel that too. While you're doing that, I'm casting Mage Hand. Okay. <laughs> because it's a press to digitate. It's a um, cantrip. Cantrip. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a free. It's a freebie. It, it's a freebie. It is my dice. It can lift or or carry up to ten pounds. Oh, yes. So I'm casting Mage Hand and then sending it over to help push on the lid of the sarcophagus. Well, <laughs> so was, helpful. So, so I, helpful. I just want it to be known that I rolled dexterity to like stick the landing and make it look like I did it on purpose. Mm-hmm. I rolled a seven. So I face plant into the wall, and I'd li- if if it's okay with the GM, I'd like to smash a few jars accidentally. Sure. <laughs> so they shatter, and you just see like dust from whatever was in there just go all over the floor. And, I, and there's just this really like embarrassed expression on my face, like. Nothing in those jars. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a desecration. That's like five desecrations right there. No, no, listen, listen. The dead 
um, are cool. You know, we're cool. The dead and I, we got a thing. Demons, I'll kill demons every time I see demons. When you're done playing around, would you like to help with the lead? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. The Let me, by the way, is not moving it. Let me, roll, <laughs> let me roll strength again here. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to roll my actual physical dice. Here we go. That's totally going to be better. That's three. <laughs> three? So five yeah. total. Okay, so as it's this tragedy is all it happening... It seems stuck in place. I'm going to go ahead and cast Healing Word on myself and try and get some of my hit points back. Here, let me use Dawn Swinger here and like use it as a, a crowbar. No, that's, it's not. I no. don't work that way. I'm yeah. made of light. Exactly. We're going to use you to banish the darkness of this freaking sarcophagus lid. I roll another strength check. <laughs> oh my god, that's a seven. So I, I'll, I'll get out of single digits one of these days. I, I went ahead and rolled a strength check to try and help as well. I what rolled a two. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, what is wrong with I'm us? Heal real quick. I'm going to come help. Hang on, I'm going to take 20 and sit here for an hour. No, I'm not going to do that. I got six hit points back. It's taking says, 20 oh, even great, a Manator. I had such hope before this room. <laughs> listen, listen. It's been a long day. A really long day. I just had a brilliant idea. I just oh, had a brilliant boy. idea. No, th this is actually sp smart. <laughs> it's actually smart. As opposed smart. to our usual <laughs> approach. Yeah, to no, this is good already. <laughs> While they're trying to get the lid off, I can cast Understand Language as a ritual. Oh, yes. how long does it take? Uh, rituals always take add 10 minutes to the casting time of the spell. Ah, okay. Okay. And take 10 minutes, ironically enough, is taking 10, so is a 12 enough to shove this thing? <laughs> I'll try uh, and give a hand. Yeah, with both of you shoving in it for 10 minutes... <laughs> I want you to picture <laughs> for ten solid minutes. I mean, it, so it, it's it's one of those things where you're shoving, you're shoving, 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 and finally you realize, oh, we got to lift it up and then, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Camera right. pans down, the hinges are on the side. We're pushing at <laughs> clunk, clunk, clunk. It's got the clunk. little lip inside. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, actually, Tassin, do you hand on bring her off to somebody before you do this? Um, actually, I, I'm going to see if I can... Here, I'll take... Ah! Yeah, exactly, because it's just going to burn everybody. So I'm going to basically dispel it, for lack of a better term, so I can... I can. Oh. Like, basically... If, as soon as you it dispel away. it, it flares back, back up and says, please, I don't want to go back into the darkness again. No, please. Well, okay, but I, I, I need both my hands, so... Uh, just, just drop it on the floor. Hand me to somebody else, but not... Not the demon person. I'm not a demon. I'm uh, right here. I can hear you. Okay. I know. Jar, I meant Jim for you Jar. to hear that. Yeah. Uh, Jim Jar, can you hold this for a second? Hey, sure. He grabs it because Liam's busy and well, Mark's not. He I'm just holding it, it like the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Listen, just because I am bursting with demonic power, does you're not saying make this me... as we're pushing. Yeah, no, I'm actually saying this as I'm shoving. <laughs> just because I am bursting yeah. with demonic power does not make me a demon. Uh, 14 on strength check. Yeah, guess, so this thing, cool, like, yeah. you lift it up and you shove it, and it, you know, clatters to the side of the thud. And you look inside the sarcophagus, and you see that there seems to be, like, a life-size statue of a woman who looks strikingly similar to the wraith that you just bought, except... I, I stone sense. Okay. What kind of stone is it made of? Uh, it doesn't... Mm, let's see. Oh, it's black marble. Ooh, that's could fetch pr pretty price back. I, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop trying to use the door yeah. This could but fetch I mean, a there's... pretty price back. Oh, I and mean, there's gems and stuff in there as well. We're gonna start prying gems off. Okay. So you start prying gems off. Um, there's you know topazes kind of stuff. Um, you get this really nasty feeling though as you're prying them off. Please make me a charisma saving throw. Oh come things. on! Okay, okay. Uh, so that's just that's just nothing. Um, do I even get my? Pro I don't even get my proficiency with that, do I? Not a good save for monks. That well, the good news is I, I finally rolled well, so that's a seventeen on the dice because I have a plus zero. Okay. It's like okay. you haven't seen the mummy. You don't go prying stuff off of statues. Yeah, so you're prying the stuff. Oh yeah, off I get the knife, you know. It. Yeah, but yeah. like, this is something feels bad. Like you got your hairs are standing up on end as you do it. 
Maybe we should destroy the statue first. It's a solid uh, chunk of marble, but you can... <laughs> surprise, motherfucker. And I, I, I'd like to think at this point, I turn and I see that the other two are looking at me weird. I'm like, okay, look. We need fungible currency when we get to town to procure things. Like, I'm not being greedy hey, here. Jim we says, have hey, nothing. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. We have I mean, nothing. I don't know what you're talking... You just turned around and started saying stuff to us. <laughs> you looked like you were doing fine. Do we have a... Because ha I'm like on edge now because of yeah. the, the tingles. I'm like, look... So Whatever, whoever's staring at me down down the back of my neck, glaring judgmentally. Okay, the Jim Jordan, can I have Don bring her back here for a second? Hey, here you go. Okay, so first of all, gonna hold the blade over the sarco. Do you recognize the statue or this person that we just fought? I recognize <laughs> the carved clothing. Perhaps this is obviously Netherese, but I don't know this particular person. Mm. All right. So I'm going to just touch the tip of the sword to the statue. Yeah. Okay. And cut to outside the cave. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so now we're going to be playing the other characters who are no, yeah. not in here with us. What was that sound? <laughs> the group's outside. <laughs> like, well, better continue on. No, they um, didn't make it. <laughs> and so they never made it. Yeah. Uh, no, so it starts, I mean, it, it starts obviously heating the metal up. Or not the metal, the uh, stone up. Oh, um, I was going to say, what? Yeah. The statue starts burning the burning sword. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <sighs> yeah, um, you wave it around in it, and the sword actually like kind of like I mean, the blade like goes through it, right? And it kind of splits around it like it's not able to cut it through like a single slice. Mm -hmm. But it's obviously you know, I mean, it's doing fire damage to it, right? or okay. radiant damage. Sorry. So I'm just like just testing it to see if there's any sort of reaction other than what a blade would do to. Like, is there like, I mean, a, a screaming, could... a hissing, uh, yeah, like a, yeah, like, like poison uh, gas escaping. Does the statue one. move its face and <laughs> there, it stop there, it? No, <laughs> I mean, does it, does it go like this? <laughs> Just saying, these are questions I need answers to. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, you, you start like it starts scoring up the surface when you're okay. waving around. So te test and you try to pull a gem off. And, okay, you have a lot more charisma than I do. So. <laughs> A really I strange say thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll reach out and touch one of the gems. Okay. See if that has any effect. Any, uh, meanwhile, I'm, I'm going over Gem Jar. Jim, do you have like a hammer and chisel? Hammer and chisel? Um, in, your, in your tool pack that we gave I, you? I got, a, I got like those. a file and like some, some picks and stuff. Uh, I'll, uh, I want something to destroy a statue. Help me out here, dude. And a 12. Oh, you want to destroy a statue like how destroyed? I mean, like, all but the gems are now dust. Although that's obsidian marble, which... Yeah, that, that ain't going to happen. Unless you <laughs> I just like realized you already told me what and that Leon, is. You, can you cast Disintegrate or something? No? All right. Yeah, no, that, that ain't happening. <sighs> we could take the whole thing. It's not that heavy. Yeah, yeah. the solid block of marble is probably not that heavy. <laughs> it's fine. Hang on, I'll roll real strength. I start or to we... try and lift it out. Oh, I rolled a 20. I rolled a 20. That's unbelievable. That's 22. You don't that, get a hernia. To pull right. that thing out. So you try to lift it out? Uh, okay, you go. <laughs> yeah, and, and like it's the, the scene from Captain America Winter Soldier where he's poised holding the helicopter, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, super muscular. <laughs> <and up." laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it's not coming out. Now, is it because it's like adhered to the sarcophagus? Yeah, you're like, it seems to be adhered to it. Okay, that's that's actually what I was thinking. Okay, um, so we just take the sarcophagus with us, no problem. What? <laughs> oh, good, even easier. <laughs> Meanwhile, I just decided you, to just. You want go me back to go to... get some help? I'm like, just prying more of the gems off. The I six people that we have outside of the cave entrance. Yeah, I think Ront could probably give us a little bit of a hand. Have yeah, I, I learned I... anything from? All right. Meanwhile. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna take a short rest while he figures out the lifting, and he's figuring out the. Uh, I'm actively pulling the gems off while you're translating. Uh, I want to be on record that this is a bad idea. All right, so Liam, your comprehending languages finishes as they're sitting there trying to you know, pry gems out and muscle a block of marble that is adhered to the sarcophagus. Out your standard adventuring stuff, <laughs> like um, you do. Yes. <laughs> And you finish your ritual. Your comprehend languages 
flares up, and you are able to read all of the glyphs and so all this sort of stuff around. Um, you see on the sarcophagus, um, in addition to the landscape and the floating cities on there, which are just pictures, um, there are some inscriptions on there which say something to the effect of, you know, into darkness we cast Brysis. May she rest here forever, away from the light. Okay, out of character, whatever she did to piss them off is serious. <laughs> like, that's like one of the be worst things they could do to a fellow Netherese. That's like next level excommunication. Yeah, yeah, that's mean. In character, I'm just like, okay, gem. Oh, hang on, guys, I, I found a sword. Down uh, here. And can I actually? <laughs> can I just? Uh, That's convenient. I'm sure it'll be on the uh, side of good. Rimmer says, "It's no good, Mark. The sword's cursed." <laughs> no, it's fine. No. Anyway, sorry. Why is it so cold? Lead your no, party sorry. home, Mark. <laughs> hmm. Um. The there are some markings in this room. Um. Most of them are scratched out. I think you recall that from before, hopefully. Um, yep. But the ones that you can make out here, that are netherese, um, seem to be just general words, some arcane words. Maybe there were some words of power around here at some point in time that are not there anymore. Okay. They're no longer working, rather, because they've been all been scratched out. Okay. And the name Brysis does not sound familiar or anything? Or do you want to um, roll on that? a history check. Specifically history? Crisis. Yes. Okay. Ooh, 18. 18. All right. Um, you have heard the name uh, Brysis, Brysis of Kaim. In, re in reference to, like, Netherese names. Uh, like, Netherese great sorcerers and wizards and stuff. But as far as anything specific... No, which means that probably was not any great inventor of like new magics or anything of that sort. That much you would know. Okay. You don't know of any, like historically, you don't know of any crisis that was like cast out or anything like that. So this may have been something that was not really of great historical note, at least to, you know, three books. But, you know. There it is. Do I have any you, copper? Do you have any copper? I'm. You, I know you have some copper from. Okay. Your bro. Okay. I'm gonna take two pieces of copper, mm -hmm. and put them over the statue's eyes. You okay. have chosen wise. You hear a click in the distance. <laughs> oh God! Thank you for the following, <laughs> uh, D locks. Thank you for that. Appreciate. I think our door opens up and someone comes out and says, "Congratulations!" Yeah. Is, 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 is this now mist or is this Resident Evil? Because I mean, <laughs> uh, no, the, the, the two pieces lay in there. Inver says, "Very respectful, but uh, we should take those before we leave." I've, I've by this point, have I gotten like all the gems? Yeah, you, you managed to get the gems. You got like you know ten sort of gems. Awesome. Before I leave, I like spit on the statue. No, he's oh, all right. Jimra says, I think that's now six desecrations in this room. I turn to look at Jimra, and I don't actually say that, I just hit him with a look, real quick. Like, I bet you'll do one more before you leave. Damn right, that I just come <laughs> at him. No, I, I don't actually, I, none of that happens. None of that happens. I'm in, I'm in a bad mood in character, in character, but um. I just I just glared him for a second. Put the gems in my bag. Mm -hmm. not, not that I trust those. Don't trust those two. I don't trust Jim Nor. Is anything else gems? worth loading? Well, how did you? <laughs> no, now I slug him. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't see anything else particular around here, um, Liam. You look around here. There seems to you seem to have run out of inscriptions. There wasn't a huge amount in here. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to go around to the rest of the sarcophaguses okay. and do the same thing. Put mm, coppers okay. on each of the statue's eyes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, 
downstairs in the other tomb where you fought the wraith um it was just murals down there there wasn't anything to actually translate um up here in the main area in the entrance uh let's see oh um there is something you might find interesting um part of the wall over here uh which you couldn't actually read before uh you can now read because it is a netherese calendar oh so they have a a netherese calendar stone there i'll make note of that yeah um oh i guess actually using this you could probably kind of determine when uh this place was built and i think your camera froze third it did um i may have to turn it off and on again oh it just it just stopped and not find video source good There we go. Yeah, and we're back. All right. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, so if you like, you can try and determine when this particular place was built based on this calendar stuff. Now translate. Uh, yeah, sure. So you mark it back to around the fall of the Netherese Empire, when you know, the literal fall of the Empire. So it probably happened shortly before. Okay. That makes this sense. Is, this is well into um, their, their reign right before they had the accident where somebody tried to be a deity and then just brought everything crashing down. <laughs> All right, so you spend a bit of time looking around this place. As far as you can tell, you've pretty much looted and pillaged. Them. Really wish I could destroy the marble, but whatever. I mean, it, you could eventually, probably, but it's going to take. Yep. Wait, I've got it. You, know, you, <clears throat> you remember Pandaria? Yes. So I'm like, oh, and then it just sh shatters right in half. <laughs> yes, sure. You think that in shatters. your mind, and when you open your eyes, you see, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, yeah, my hand is now in two pieces. That's very strange. Stonebury says, what's he doing? He's just standing there making sound effects while looking at the coffin. <laughs> it's, his, it's his way. <laughs> I think Luke, making like I a, am your deep father. throat sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, no. Jimmy says, well, that's weird. I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't actually do that. <clears throat> It'd be awesome if you'd let me, but no. Uh, unfortunately, not this particular. All right. I make a note for later when I'm a god to come destroy this. <laughs> come destroy a statue in a tomb. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that narrows it down. All right. Uh, so you come out with your newfound wealth, or at least you can find a place to actually. Oh yeah, how much? It. Like, do we have? What did we get? No, the gems are worth fifty gold each. How many do we have? Ten. Okay, so I don't have any treasure. Like no inv oh, Here we go. Treasure, sure. Ten, fifty GP gems. There we go. Good for trading. All right, and you come out to the rest of the party who are just. Sitting... We didn't find anything. <laughs> no. Chink, 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 chink. Yeah, and I've got the sword that's just blazing. Yeah, yes. yes. You've got this yep. giant blazing nothing. sword. I've just got a giant bag of gems. Nothing. It's the nothing. weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, Smooba says, Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> we found nothing. No, I don't actually do that. Yeah. I'm not a dick. We don't ask any questions. We didn't find anything. We don't know no, anything. I will actually straight up tell them we we got some gems. Hopefully, whenever we get to, I forgot where we're going. We'll be able to, you know, use that to be able to barter our way to some whatever you know supplies and provisions, and safety and food. Um, Don Bringer says to everyone, "Hello, friends. Oh, you certainly are a strange crew." Give me another one to start. 
And can I like eye beam her? I'm just curious. I mean, if you want, <laughs> I don't think you can do anything. Uh, it, well, I mean, it's technically, I know it's fire damage, but it's demonic power, right? I'm just curious it's how true. she would react yeah. to demonic power washing over her like that. I mean, there's only one way to find out, right? Oh, this is going to go bad. Uh, viewers at home, do you think I should shoot demonic eye beams at his sword that is our ally? <laughs> You know, when you say it out loud, it's, it's, it's <laughs> it doesn't. It's not the best. Vote now okay. on your phones. Yeah. Well, yes. Yes. For ten dollars. No. Okay. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Sarant goes over to your test and says, "Oh, shaman, powerful. You have a uh, uh, what? Did, what that? Uh, it's called Dawnbringer. It's a sword of light. Oh, sort of lame. How you hit things with light?" Oh boy! <laughs> Looks like everyone know. in chat is saying, "Just go ahead and do it." <laughs> of course they no, are. No, I'm not going to waste it. I, I didn't realize I had minimum, uh, a certain number of char limited charges on that. It's not a cantrip to shoot eye beams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Elda says, "Well, uh, can we continue on?" Yes, because this. Don't think we're going to be real sneaky with that sword around, but. Uh, Maybe it'll ward some things off. Who knows? Dawnbringer, if I promise to take you to the surface, can we diminish your light to, like, minimum? Make me a persuasion check. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I rolled a natural one. Oh, okay. The most unpersuasive thing you can possibly. <laughs> you just seem tired and you're like, you know, like you're debating it and it just doesn't take it well. I'm like, no, please, I I must remain lit. I uh, I fear going back into the darkness. I don't think I shall ever return if I do. Okay. Uh compromise. Hold me just, close. just as a question, like, is that gonna tire you out? madame you know constantly burning this flame doesn't that weary you no of course not i was made to do of course that's, that's of course. Good, good to know constantly um, lit i think i've got some booze yeah <laughs> Ooh, that's a good oh, idea merriment yes <laughs> yes uh hey uh don Brigo, what are your thoughts on spider webs spider webs well they don't affect me a tremendous amount but Many creatures of darkness do revere spiders, so I tend to have an aversion to them. Do you mind slicing at those webs over there? Just see what happens. Okay. Because um, we've been burning as we go. I'm curious if the sword could save us some burning time on burning. Okay. Before I do that, it does say, as an action, while the braid persists, you can expand or reduce the radius of the bright dim light by five feet each to a maximum of 30 feet each or a minimum of 10 feet each. I'm assuming I can reduce the light to just 10, a 10 foot radius. Yes. Okay. Let's compromise to that. Just, 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 just turn the, turn it down from 11, put you at about a five. Very well, but, but no more. No more. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll do that. And yeah, I'll go. Test out a spider web. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it slices through it. It basically just removes a chunk of it. Um, it doesn't set it on fire. It so doesn't actually assuming. do fire damage. Yeah. No, it's, I'm not sure what radiant damage does to. Yeah, I, that's part of what I was wondering, really, is like, like a sunburn. Do. Oh, well. It was worth it. Thank you very much, Don Swinger. I appreciate it. <sighs> God. Oh, I don't swing that way. Trust me, I know. Bird, and then the I beams. Just oh. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So Shushar says, "Well, shall we continue on then? It is yes, not too much go. further to go. Let's go. Let's go. He starts yep. waddling off. Okay. All right. So I've taken some time to organize." People, just so you kind of know what roles they're currently filling right now. Okay. Um, and do... where, are we within a day, or are we going to be camping at some point in time out in the Underdark? Uh, you're going to be camping at least once or twice. Okay. The as far as because Shushar I... knows. Okay. Because I want to try and, like, not, obviously not while we're walking. I can't fit in a uh, uh, short rest to 
bring back my spells and maybe heal up again. But um, yeah, I'll wait till we get to camp then. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so you continue on for a little while longer. Roll, that roll. All right, and you're still maintaining the fast pace that you had from last time. Um, oh, yeah. Food is diminishing, but you have, Elvis says, you know, if we, if it is truly as short of a distance as Shushar says, we'll run out of food just about as soon as we get there. And then hopefully we can resupply. Or we can eat Shushar. Mm. <laughs> it looks to be mostly fat, but you know, fat fish. Ooh. He's a bit gamey. All right, uh, you walk until it's time to camp, and you settle down for a rest, unless you want to keep force marching. No, we should probably at least get a short rest, bare minimum. Okay. Well, you're you're settling down for a long rest, unless you really want to. Did anybody besides me take damage in their last encounter? Uh, I am at less than a third health. Okay. Liam? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and... So we're going to be resting anyway. I'll cast Prayer of Healing. This is up to six creatures of your choice that you can see within range. Each uh, regain hit points equal to 2d8 plus my spellcasting ability modifier. So, spell casting modifier is just my wisdom modifier, isn't it? Yes. Okay. 2d8 plus 3. Four. And 2, so 6, 3, 9. So each of us gets 9. Or do I need to roll separately per individual? Or is that just the... You can just do one for everybody. Okay. So everybody gets 9 hit points back. Which brings me back to full. All right, cool. Um, Elith is actually able to... Um, uh, Bupido and Jimjar are able to scout out a fairly well-defended cave, so to speak. Um, and you are able I'm, to... I'm take... sorry, well-defended or well-defensible? Well-defensible. Because <laughs> if it's well-defended, I'm like, guys, no! Maybe we <laughs> well, shouldn't use that one. <laughs> well-defensible. It's sheltered <laughs> and easily defendable. Okay, okay. okay. Um, and uh, Eldith actually suggests just settling down here and taking a long rest because there's probably very little chance of encountering anything, and if you do, you'll be able to more easily find it there. Can I like spend ten minutes scouting the area with others to make sure that there's no spider nest or mind flayer nest or beholder nest or ancient god nests around here? Sure. Who do you want to go with you? Everyone. Just try the entire party. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I was like, this isn't much of a scouting party, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's look. I need to make sure that we're not dead. Okay, everybody, make me a perception check then. Uh, use my physical guy. I, I, I... <laughs> well, not for that. <laughs> Never use my physical tie again. That's a, uh, I think it's an eight. Yeah, it's an eight. Okay. Now I gotta retrieve my dice. <laughs> 16. 21. 21. Ooh, okay. Uh, so 21 and 16. So you don't see any webs or any spiders, fortunately. Um, as a matter of fact, this place actually looks pretty serene. You have come into a place that has all sorts of bioluminescent fungi. Um, there is a little bit of water that you probably don't want to drink nearby, but it's there. And yeah, you see a couple of animals wandering around here. You have Maybe chosen like blind twice. types of mammals, lizards and such. But nothing really seems to be menacing room. Not that you can see. Seems okay. okay. Thank you for the follow codex. Appreciate that. So you're able to settle down and get in a long rest. So that means all the spells come back. You're getting awesome. hit points. Half your hit dice come back. You have spent any. All that good stuff. Uh, Mark's probably going to want that when he gets back. Yeah. 
he's going to get his stock back. Yes. I'll wait for him to get back before moving on. Okay. Did you want to so reset that... your camera again? Oh, that oh, happened yeah. again? Yeah. Yeah. You have another USB port you could plug it into or something, maybe? It's it's the cable. It's it's not the USB oh, okay. port. And it, unfortunately, it's the actual cable that's connected to the camera. It's fun. Let me try something. I need to get a new one, but... Hey, it's Zara. Good to see you again. Shiny. Let's be bad guys. Thank you, Tazara. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Well. No, so, actually, we're not wrapping up. Uh, no. Moore was just uh, stepping away for a minute, but he's back, so. Return from being eaten by spiders. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> so they found a lot of spiders. No! So roll initiative. There's 10 All right. Spiders. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, God. <laughs> no, they, they, this place is actually pretty serene. Oh, okay. Um, relatively speaking. Although they're still complaining that there's you know, literally zero places to find water except for certain plants it's like there's water around but it's not something you want to drink i mean it's the underdark how are we going to get water in general well eldith has actually been able to find trace amounts of water just from various uh underdark uh, fauna uh, foreign <laughs> fauna that's pretty good i wish we had a cleric who could cast create water i have a kind of cleric dude Actually, that in all sincerity, do you have that on your spell list? No, I literally do not have that as an option. Wow. Okay. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't think so. Sure. Let me sure. look. I mean, that's fine if you don't have it, but it uh, it's not in cantrips. My camera's not reconnecting for some reason. I can purify food and drink, but I can't create it. I guess if we can collect some of this rancid cave water, I can purify it, but that's not until... Oh, that is a first level spell. All non-magical food and drink within a five-foot radius sphere centered on the point where point of your choice within range is purified and rendered free of poison and disease. Um, I will say you can taste, use however... Perhaps. Yeah, you can use that to get some water if there happens to be any like nearby, like now, because you yeah. can literally like get the water out and then purify it so it doesn't you know kill you when you drink it, or at least gives you a very bad case of Underdark's Revenge. Oh, <laughs> the worst dysentery ever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Or uh, you the party is able to get a long rest, so your stuff resets. Also, while I'm resting up, I'm going to commune with Kalimbor and ask him about uh, for guidance on what I should best use Dawn Ringer for. Okay. And by the way, Dawn Ringer, you can set her down, but she just like basically remains active. Okay. Like, just on the floor. Just, I can't turn this lightsaber off. It's just going yeah. <laughs> to. So gonna you wake up the and there's world. like a, an outline of a scorched rock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, you commune with Kelimbor. All right. Tassin well, is... Uh, oh, so, sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just saying... Uh, go ahead, Trito. Tassin, you're uh, purifying water or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Press Digitation mm -hmm. and flavor it. 
<laughs> okay. Nice. Good combo move. I like what it. What flavor is it? Um, beef Elden stew. Theory. Beef stew. Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> I am on board yet. Vomit. Okay. Yeah, yet yeah, disturbed at the same time. Cold <laughs> beef stew that's very watered down by the nature of it being water. Yep. Wow. Yeah. It's one of those things where everybody's just sitting there slurping it and nobody says anything. <laughs> <laughs> just dead silence. It's just like. And Don Burger says, Why is everyone so quiet? Here, try some. I splash a little on her. And Jimmer says, You know. I'm not going to say no, but this is the weirdest thing I think I've ever done. <laughs> Guys aren't normal. <laughs> it's either that or Tang. I mean... Yeah, yeah. no, that's fair. <laughs> the, why are those the options? <laughs> yeah. It's Tang or Beef Stew. Take that yeah. choice. There's no mulled wine. There's no, no, no. There's no ale. No, it's straight to like no, Beef Stew actually, or Tang. I will say this. Ron actually does really like this. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> He's like, oh... This is like when I got to drink the bottom of the, the soup bowl. Oh my god. <laughs> so, so I lose my appetite. Yeah, phrasing. <laughs> so for, for the record, uh, last night I was playing uh, this game, Scum. Mm -hmm. And um, I found a beef stew MRE. Okay. I can't be safe. Beef stew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Eating water MREs. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and you're, and you're pairing those with some of the drow rations that you're you know, finishing off right now from the outpost. So you know you got you got some stuff to dip in it. All right. Get your rest in, and you start off on your next traveling session. You travel for a few more hours. Um, you get outside of the the serene area, and it starts to get kind of cold um for some particular reason not quite sure why but it's not to the point where it's uncomfortable yet and real quick as we're going uh before that anything back from calvor or just like just oh yeah uh make me a d100 roll your call is very important to us yeah exactly yeah <laughs> please please your continue call. to hold oh, due to a high call oh. volume <laughs> the sixth day when he mm -hmm. calls the cops and it's the, oh, yeah, the, the, yeah. <laughs> the answering machine, please press one if it's an emergency. <laughs> uh, 61. 61. You are the 61th caller. Um, yeah. No, um, you you pray to Kelivor, Um During the middle of it, Dawnbringer asks who you're praying to. You kind of get the sense that she's able to kind of know what you're doing just because you're attuned. Like if you're doing something, you know, she kind of like catches on. Um, and I mean, it's, it's been mainly like your other, other sessions lately with Kellum more, like you feel like you're on the right track, but mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're not getting anything, anything clear. Okay. At least at the very least you feel a bit of encouragement. Okay. I don't feel like I'm straying from the path. No. Okay. All right. Okay. You continue on for several hours with Fushar leading you. Um, he takes you through this this cold area, and uh, after three ish hours, um, both Bupdo and Jimjar, your scouts, come back from their scouting ahead, and they tell you that there are some creatures up ahead. Uh, more specifically, there seems to be some a, a Durgar traveling caravan, some merchants that are stopped. They, he says he spots four of them with uh, two beasts of burden and several packs on them. They're currently camped out. Uh, he says they could probably take you around them. You could probably try and sneak around them, or you can confront them or talk to them, whatever you'd like to do. How many are there? He says there are uh, four Durgar. They, he said they looked, uh, Jim Jar said they looked fairly well armored. Um, they had these crossbows that you've seen before repeating crossbows that's a Durgar invention of some sort um there are four of those and then two uh beasts of burden he says they were um they look like uh he's was he's not sure what the name of them are but he knows they're basically like i mean we could kill them if we have to i i, I just have one thing to say enchantments okay. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, I'm not suggesting that we go kill them. I mean, we could try to interact with them, and if they're hostile, then you know we got this, right? Yeah, I'm gonna feel real bad if I kill Sandal. I, I don't want to kill Sandal. <laughs> no, that's not cool, man. <laughs> yeah, Boobinder says that sounds good. You know, either way, we'll get something out of it, probably. You did just grab uh, a. pittance of gems really yeah. minuscule amount a, a clutch a clutch yeah it's not enough to make a bed out of yet but i'm working on that still you're not a dragon <laughs> but it you're might be worth uh it, it might be worth seeing what they have to trade <laughs> like I how think... do we approach friendly in the under how do we do that well i think the three of us should approach last since we're not from the Underdark. I think the people who are from the Underdark should be ambassadors, if you will. Because, you know, a human with a glowing uh, sword and a dwarf who's got glowing black eyes and a large uh, orc who's wielding magic might put a few people off. I say we send Shushar. Oh... Jimmer says, ah, oh, oh okay. <laughs> That'll be cool. Jimmer says, I would be most willing to negotiate with these fine dwarves. I'm going to grab a bowl of popcorn and sit down to watch from a safe distance. <laughs> okay. Here, I, I got some. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> All right. You want to send the shoes ahead? I think someone else should go with him. <laughs> Just Jimmer because... says, you know, I, I'll go with him. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, he slaps Shushar <laughs> on the side and says, you know, you just let me do the talk and you sit there and look pretty. <laughs> All right. Your, play to your strengths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so they both travel a little bit ahead. Um, and you're able to follow them like at a, at a distance. Do you want to try and be stealthy and just watch them or do you just want to make yourselves known or do you not even? I'll go ahead and stealth, whatever okay. everyone else does, because I actually have decent stealth. Okay. And I even roll well. So that's a, I think a 21. 21, okay. Yep, I'm right. Stealth as well. I'll try. Yeah, Tassel, hey, unfortunately. You, you try away, away from us, so when you fail. No. I'm not at advantage? Uh, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage, because okay. even getting close is going to reveal yourself. <clears throat> All right. That's seven for the first one, and eight for the second, so it's either, well, it'll be 11. Okay. Liam? I got a 21. <laughs> okay. Fade from view. This <laughs> 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 snob says, why are we sneaking around in the shadows? Come, Tassel, let us face them full on in the sunlight. I'm over there, away from the giant <laughs> glowing sword. It, for real, I, I actually, I was like, all right, let's sneak in. And then I just looked at Tasta first. I was like, I'm going to go that way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I told you the way I'm going in case. I'm, you know. I'm like fumbling around, like trying to put the sword behind my back or trying to like. <laughs> just like hold it up like, with a like, cloak yeah, or something. Yeah, like, there we go. Just, it's not, um, it's too bright. Do you have yeah, the I'll, stream up? Uh, I Hang on, I have it paused here. We know I do. I'm stealthing. <laughs> sorry continue so yeah I, I point and I would go another way and I'm over there um okay so you see uh, both Shushar and Jimjar approaching these traders and you, and you see them they're, they're four Dorogar they look to be fairly wealthy they've got some nice leathers and, and furs on they have at their side strange looking crossbows um, which seem to have cartridges on them these must be the repeating crossbows it looks like they've got some battle hammers that they currently aren't wielding they're just on the side and they're just sitting there around a the fire eating some probably pretty tasty beef stew that's not watered down and they have he two kill them immediately and steal their food <laughs> wow and just... they have two um what uh for lack of a better term, they look uh, much like um, very hairy, large cows uh, that have crates strapped to them, and they're currently eating something out of feet bags. And 
they all four look up when Jim Jar and Shushar begin approaching them. Um, notice that they're they're just staring at this waddling Kuatoa, which is just coming up towards them with this big dopey smile on his face. <laughs> He's like, "Hello, friends." Jim Jar slaps him on the side and says, "My most esteemed Duragar, we two individuals are here to conduct trade with you." He rolls something. <laughs> and he rolls a one. I think he rolls and disbelief. We're in, and we're in initiative. He does not. The Duragar seem to look at each other, and you know, one of them strokes his white beard, and he goes, ha! And he says something to him in Dwarven, which I think one person can... You know. As I say, what's, what's he say? <laughs> um, he says, uh, this little deep gnome is going to be interesting. Uh, maybe he has something. He has the looks of a thief about him, so keep your... Keep your hands on your coin person. And he calls out in common and says, or under common, actually, um, to Jinjar and says, uh, come here and sit with us and eat by the fire, you and your, your fishy friend, and we'll talk. And they go over and, and sit down. You hear them conversing. So essentially, Jinjar works out of them that they have uh, for sale some rations. They also have uh, several items like the heating crossbows that they're willing to sell at a, a premium price. Um, they have miscellaneous bits of survival gear, basically does survival packs, rope, water skins, that sort of stuff. And they are heading to Gracklestug, which is days travel away, a, lo a long time away. Um, Jim Jar asked him a bit about Sloop Loop, and they're like, "Yeah, it's it's about a, day, a couple days travel that that direction." Which is a little bit worrying because you thought it was just one day, but they seem to say it's a few. Um, and yeah, that's what you hear from them. Um, Jim Jar at one point will kind of slip away, letting them talk to Shushar, who seems to have absolutely nothing of worth to say, but at least he's entertaining. And come back to everybody and say, uh, so uh, are we interested in all in any of the stuff they got? They got generic adventuring stuff, uh, traveling stuff. They've got those beaten crossbows. Those are probably going to be a couple hundred gold, I'd say. And uh, and some food. Probably food's going to be our topper. Yeah, I think so, too. So they're willing to sell. You, you know, third, I want you to really, you know, to, to, to I, I want to explain something to you, to Guido, to Tastin. I, I shouldn't be using people's names. I've never understood the mentality of the motor to hobo until this exact moment in time. <laughs> hear, me, hear me out. Because killing them and taking their stuff is a win win scenario from an, in, in like pure mechanics perspective, right? Mm -hmm. We get experience for killing them, we get their stuff. And I was, I found myself thinking, okay, we could trade for this, try to work with it. What do we have thing? And like that stray thought just hit the back of my mind. I was like, well, that'd be hard. Oh, okay. I get it now. Much easier to justify when they have something that you actually need. It's true. They have food. We should just kill them. Yeah. <laughs> we should just kill them. Straight to that. So they actually have um, 23 days worth of provisions. How much of that are they willing to sell? Well, I'm sorry, that's the sellable amount. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 Obviously, they're not going to sell their food and be like, oh, wait, whoops. That's <laughs> why I was asking. Yeah. One of and you, do we get more food? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they obviously have uh, much more than that. See, there's that murder hobo mentality again. If we yeah, kill yeah. one, yeah. you will we sell have more. more food to sell. Yeah. We just walk mm -hmm. up and be like, all right, we're willing to murder however many of you we want. However, when you're willing to sacrifice, and we'll pay you more money, whoever's left over, you'll get a bigger share of the pie too. Mm -hmm. It's win win you for you. Actually, choose. All three of you make an investigation check, intelligence choose. investigation. Oh, thank God I rolled well because that's just like plus nothing for me. So that's a 17. Natural 20. Eight. Natural 20. I still am yeah, having a hard time with this whole putting the sword light away, and it's really bugging me. I'm still super self, by the way. I'm still. <laughs> All right, we'll say so. Both Liam and Mark, 
uh, based on the amount of days they said they'd be traveling, based on the amount of people there, you estimate there's probably a total of 60 days worth of rations combined. Yeah, that would be it. What do we need that much food for? There you go. Look, I'm hungry, okay? I could eat. All you're the saying. small you're one of the smallest among us. L- listen, listen. No, I, I'm I'm not actually thinking that at all. <laughs> you are all going joking. To be so sick of rations. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah, no, I'm I'm aware. Um let's go ahead and I'm gonna stay stealth. I'm gonna stay out of this. But I'm basically here just in case they're trying to pull something. <laughs> Like they've got friends who are out on scouting or whatever, and like, hey, now you're gonna give us a better deal. Like, I'm here in case things get bad. So that's just my role. I'm just kind of out of the negotiations. Okay. Is there anything specific you're wanting to try and, and pick up? I mean, I can give you some examples of some stuff that they they've got that's just generic. see what would they like maybe knowledge about uh the region about uh purifying water in the underdark oh okay um and i'll be back in just a minute okay yeah from what you can tell they seem to have been carrying like water with them like they're not really concerned about trying to find water. Uh, but if you like, Jim Jar can go back and ask them about it. Ask them if they have a canteen that when you put in water or liquid of any kind, it turns it to monster energy drink. <laughs> uh, the famous monster curtain. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, anything else particularly you'd like to buy? Um, they have various types of kits, like you know, herbalism kits or healers kits, like mess kits. Some, a couple of manacles, because you know, of course they do picks, holes, of course the rations, some ropes. Oh, well, their merchant scales, because they need those. Um, some shovels, some things like that. Um, but if not, um, you know, I can go back and ask them about the other situation okay all right he goes back um they green around the fire again they seem to finish up their meal or he's getting a little boring now because he can talk about enlightenment and all sorts of stuff they're not concerned about and uh you hear jim jar you know conversing with them about it and those and under common uh they seem to be a little little taken back that He's asking this information. The deep gnome is asking this, um, but they divulge anyway that that's really only something that very wealthy merchants would have. Something like that. He says they've heard of specific items of power that will just create water, and they know that the for very very long journeys for wealthy individuals, that's what they take. Otherwise, it's literally. You take the water with you, or you have some very good scouts who are able to find water, and you travel on known paths where you know you can get it. As okay. far as purifying, there's a couple of devices they know of that are kind of bulky to carry with them, but given a fire and enough time, you can basically fill water. All right, so I'll be casting that spell quite a bit. <laughs> They okay. do mention, you know, that purify thing, but you get the feeling they don't travel with too many priests. Okay. All right. If there's no purchases, they'll they'll pack up um, after bidding Kim Jar and Shu. Hold up, we're not buying anything. I, I thought, no I thought we're going to buy food. You want to buy food? I think we should. I think we should buy food. Granted, I have the jams, but that's why I, I was I, waiting for you to to. I'm, I'm willing to to pro, pro, pro provide gems for trade, but yeah, what are we? Is that all we're doing? Is buying buying food? 
unless other people need armaments and stuff, I'm pretty much well stocked. The rest of the group has like short swords and regular crossbows from looting the slave outpost. Um, so like what you should do is you should start negotiating. I'm in hearing range, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll just stay over here. And if they decide to start getting, you know, bad, I'm ready to go. And if not, then I'll just come out with the gems, right? Okay. So Jim Jar talks to them a bit. Um, they, they want uh, 46 gold for all the rations, which you realize is a fairly big upcharge, but you kind of expect that on the trail like this. Um, he tries to talk them down a bit, but they're not really having it. So it's 46 for 23 days. And is that it? Can we not negotiate this down? Jim Jar tried. Well, Jim Jar frickin' failed. <laughs> Would anyone else like to try who isn't currently stealth and willing to kill these people over food? I'm just kidding. Maybe. Hey. I mean, I like the idea of kind of sneaking out and just kind of grabbing one in a chokehold. All right, so that'll be 30 gold, 23. <laughs> no? Okay. All right, grab the next one. Yeah. So that'll be 20 gold. For 33, because now you don't need as much. Yeah, the price is the price. Cheers to those. Is anyone else going to try to negotiate that down? I don't have negotiate, and, well, quite frankly, I also don't have stealth right now. I don't think it would be a wise idea to come out of stealth at this point. I mean, I could try and negotiate, but... I have a charisma of 10. I, I can't help with this. And mine's uh, 12. So they want 40 gold. I just want to make this really clear. Oh, 46. 46. So they want all of our gems. No. They, they have been we have 50 gems. gems. 50 gold worth of gems. Oh, I'm sorry. Each, each gem is worth 50 gold. Oh, okay. That's a little different. So they want one of our gems. Got it. Basically. That's a little different. The exchange uh, rate is crap. <laughs> Jesus, seriously. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I want to be cool. Since we're all failing at the issues, and I rolled well. I guess. Okay, so what, what do I roll to throw a gem to Tastin? Uh, that would be a dexterity attack roll ranged. So that's Ow. a 17. <laughs> okay. Just beans me with it. Well, no, I'm, I'm like aiming for your chest, but you know. <laughs> tink, tink, tink. Do you so, tell him before you do this? <laughs> how? I, we're not psychically linked right now. <laughs> What's that? So, fling. Aston, a gem comes out of the shadows at you. Okay, uh, roll reflex, I guess? Yeah, say, yeah, yeah, reflex save to, to catch it or whatever. Uh, I guess this is a dexterity save. Yep. Should he not roll perception first? Okay, that's just being mean. This will be, this will be <laughs> fun. What <laughs> does that mean? Perception, oh, I fail. It's just like, no, 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 no. It just wings past me, and I don't even notice. <laughs> no, yeah. not, not if Mark is intentionally making sure he sees it. That's true, if he, like, aims yeah. to hit me. Okay. Yeah, so do I roll perception or just a dexterity check? Just a dexterity check. Okay. Uh, 16. 16, okay. Yeah, so it's it's a little awkward, but you managed to snatch it out of midair. You got a, a, a 50 gold gem. Right. Dawnbringer says, do you normally conduct negotiations like this? Shut up, you stupid <laughs> freaking sword! <laughs> Come, uh, comes from the shadows. No, 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 we did No, but we are also not from the Underdark, so... Okay, yes. well, um... No, no, how long two... have we been a party? I mean... Fair enough. That's true, two, I don't really have green... context for that. <laughs> Instead of the shouting, two green beams of fell flame just jump <laughs> out from the darkness. <laughs> yep. Subtlety. We're all about it. <laughs> Damn right. No, like, the whole idea is to be cool, like, because the whole point is you're supposed to run with this, like, okay, yeah, we'll pay. Grab the gem that's tossed at you. There you go. And then they'll be like, oh my god. So, I, alright, I wait till Jim Jar gets back and handed the gem. Okay, all right. I, I guess this is what we got to pay. Yeah, he flips it up, he says, all right, I'm sure they will like this. He goes back and there's there's no funny business. There is a smooth transaction of goods. He comes back with four gold and a 
Fuchar has a big pouch on his back that contains all the rations. Um, they, they're pretty nice rations. Um, they're military style. So it's nothing but salt <laughs> and baked no, bread. It's it's that. It's beef stew MRE. <laughs> Just but I mean, they're, they're dwarven chunk. rations, though, so, you know. Well, that's a weird thing that happened. Yeah, I'm trying to do something. Yep, that's, it's that. There. That is terrifying. Ugh. <laughs> uh. I dig into one. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, but they all have the... Oh, I um, die. And actually, uh, Mark, you will recognize this. They all have the um, symbol of the Grekel Stug. And the... Oh, oh they're, so they're thieves. Maybe I have a Cassus Belly to uh, kill these people. Or they're part of it. Who knows? No, nah, they're probably thieves. We should kill them. Deserters. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. We should really kill them. You, you, yeah, you kind of get the feeling that if they are deserters, there's probably more than you just trying to kill them. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, fine. Um, no, Grackleslug's military is up notch as far as they're All right, so you get um, some additional rations, so you really don't have any danger of running out unless cool. you get horribly lost. Speaking of which, oh god, <laughs> our guide, you sure says, "Let's continue on." I could have sworn it was one more day. I must have. Taking oh us a long God. way around, but we should be there in just a day or two. Can I roll sense intelligence on Shushar? Okay, sure. You succeed. <laughs> he has none. Yeah, do you actually want to know his intelligence? <laughs> no, no. It'll just make me sad. I do, I do, I do. All right. What's his int? His intelligence is an 11. You know what's sad is I think it's more than me. <laughs> yep, it is. He's smart. His wisdom is a 10. And his charisma is an 8. Yeah. Oh, and my headphones are falling down. All right. So, you wait for them to leave and then you continue along. Not really encountering a whole lot as you continue through your traveling day and then get ready to bed down for the. But you presume is the very last day of your journey to Slupidu. So it's going to be like five more days. Hey, you know, you've never been here before, so as far as you know, it's around the corner. All right. So you get a long rest in, and then you head out for the next day. Uh, you start seeing signs that you may be coming into a populated area. Uh, you start seeing um, hung up on rocks in various places what seem to be what you could only describe as weird primitive shrines. Stacks of rocks piled up with like old rotten fish heads on them and it stinks the high heavens. Um, Shushar, you, he smiles as you start going past them and says, this is a sign that we are close. These are the shrines to the uh, lesser-known deities of my people. Pay them no heed. But just in case they're real, don't kick them over. So tempted. Yeah. <laughs> Used to Jim, not dress Dre, great. Jim Dre says, I bet he's going to do another desecration. I bet. I grab Jim Jar, mm -hmm. hold him over one of the, the shrines and just let go. Okay. I don't actually do that. Don Bringer, um, Don Bringer says, I sense this place is, is tainted. This place is evil with many profane gods. We should be wary, and you should also make my light much brighter. Mark has oh. religious Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to wait till we get to the actual city proper, and then I'll crank it up. Okay. Do so continue along a bit, um, and the place just starts to get real slimy, uh, and you come to the first large body of water that you have seen in quite some time. Um, matter of fact, you come to a large underground lake. You can tell it's a lake because you see various colored lights dancing around the surface of this lake as there are, we can only assume are aquatic creatures just swimming in this uh, water far off in the distance and up close. It seems to be massive and probably about 
half a mile off in the distance um, around the edge of this lake, you see a settlement, um, or at least you think it's a settlement. You can barely make it out um, because there's, it seems to be lacking quite a bit of light. There just is various lanterns and whatnot going back and through it every now and then, giving you a glimpse of what seemed to be seaweed or thatch or something, some kind of buildings around there. Um, and this place just smells terrible, like you're in the worst port you've ever been in. Um, there are bits of fish and whatnot just ripped apart and strewn all over the shores of this lake. Um, I, I turn and, to what's his face and say, "Is this normal?" Ah, uh, yes. The smell of my home, and the two scouts, Upido and Jim Jar, come back from a little bit ahead and say, "Hey, uh, I think uh, I, I think there's some sort of patrol or something coming up on us uh, around the side of the lake. They're they're about a minute." minute ahead of us but uh there's about eight kuatoa those fish people coming around then they all got these uh these man catchers i think uh i think good old don bringer over there kind of gave away our position i don't know what to do um i'm gonna see Dawnbringer says if they're evil we shall strike them down Right, we'll keep that as an option B, but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and see about wrapping the blade in my cloak and see I what happens. I stealth and basically move away from the party. Okay. Um, like, not far, but I, my point is, I'm like, guys, I'm, I'm going to be back up. Yeah. Dawnbringer doth protest. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> oh, you mean for him, not me. Yes. Right. Yeah, he says, please, no, do not do this. Please, no. No, we'll, we'll be fine. We just need to... Don't want to frighten the locals. Just give it a minute. It's like you've put a bag over my head. Oh. Okay. Worst case scenario, you will be the first one to bring the light to all of them. Do you see like it, it it's not completely blacked out? Like there's like a you know faint outline of it and folks getting kind of hot. <laughs> but it's at least dull for now. All right, Mark. You, I'm sorry, you said you were going ahead. 18 stealth. 18 stealth. Um Okay. Uh, Jim Jar says he'll go with you. Just I totally to trust you, Jim Jar. I stab him immediately. <laughs> so, like, so well, hey, my... I rolled a 22 stealth, so I'm good. I, I can't even see him. Okay, so here's me. <laughs> so, like, assuming this is just rough, but like, assuming the party is like over here, the idea is I'm just kind of going off to the side, yeah, like, so say about that much. Yeah, let, let me give you kind side. of a, a, a rough outline of what you're looking at. Okay. So, you've come. So there's various like you know entrances leading to this place around here and it opens up over here where you see like various lights and what you think is the settlement over there okay keep in mind this is about like half a half a mile scale yeah from here to here All right, i get it um so you've come out around here and Jim Jar and Bupido report that the troll party is roughly over there. And he thinks that thanks to, you know, being a bright light and almost pure darkness, you pretty much instantly spot. Or at least so, yeah. they know that something's over. So what is the not path, like this area over here? That's just wall. Like, I mean, you're still underground. Um, but, rock. and th yeah. I mean, there's various, there's various smaller entrances all over here in crevices and stuff like you could probably search forever and not find all i'm debating if i want to go like I'm, I'm just gonna hold back i'm just gonna hold back so uh, this is probably way too much but i'm like 30 40 feet back you know okay so that's that's the spot i've gone to and i got an 18 on my stealth okay all right what about the rest of you liam uh, you're and Pastor, you're kind of the ones in charge of the main group right now. I'm going to try and hang back so I don't present as much, like, present a target for the party. So if okay. I'm going to be targeted, it's just a target of myself. Okay. I'm going to step to the front. Okay. 
and just lean on my staff. Ooh. Okay. Just just stand there and look comfortable. All right. You would just wait for them. Yeah. Okay. So a few minutes later, you hear this plat, 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 plat of like wet feet on stone. And you see coming out of the edge of your dark vision range what look to be eight Kuatoa. They have what seem to be man catchers and shields and nets. And you notice that the shields just have all sorts of sticky goo all over them. They're covered with a bunch of slime. They're just dripping like they've just come out of the water recently. Um, and they are coming towards you with a purpose. What do you do, Liam? I'll raise my hand. Mm -hmm. Hail, patrol. What language are you speaking in? Uh, that is a good question. Um, I think I only... Oh, I do know Undercommon. Oh, okay. I, I, I would say it in Undercommon. Okay. So you hold up your hand and say that, and they even just one of them just like raises his hand, and the rest of them and him just immediately stop. And they lower their shields and their little man catchers out in front of them, and one of them barks out in this gurgling voice, um, kind of like Chuchar's that uh, you are to surrender yourself and come to village. You are a slave now. Okay. So we're going to kill them all, right? Like, that's why I'm back here, ready to kill them all. Come, Orc, and it will not be painful. Oh, we're killing them. We're so killing them. Can I hear this? Real question. Yeah. Okay. Can I sneak forward? Sure. Okay, I'm sneaking forward. Where is Shushar right, right now? Uh, Shushar is well, Shushar is with the main group. And he's just kind of looking at them and just nodding. Um, and he uh, leans over to you and says, this is normal for them. You might want to warn them. We're not... Uh, we're not what you'd say amiable to be taken as slaves. Okay. So Shushar raises his hand and says, Greetings, friends and family. And one of them murmurs and says, It's that idiot. <laughs> and Shushar says, Yes, it is me. <laughs> the enlightened one. I have come back with my friends, my very powerful friends, to bring enlightenment to you all. And I must warn you, you should allow us to proceed they will tear your heads from your bodies and feast on your entrails. Tough but fair. <laughs> um, so they all uh, murmur around themselves, and you notice they, when they talk, they don't just stand in place. They kind of like swim around each other, almost like a school of fish will cannot remain still whenever they want to say something. Um, so. Liam, you kind of get the sense that they're not quite sure what to do, but they're not going to give up ground. And they're stopped for now. <clears throat> um, I'm going to uh, lean over to Shushar. What would, what would be the emblem of your deity? Oh, I am most enlightened. I do not follow... Any particular. That is why I am an outcast among, not an outcast, but an, an odd fish amongst the school. What's the most popular then? Most popular. Well, if it hasn't changed in the past few weeks that I've been there, it likely would still be the sea mudder. Do I know what that is? Blipdulavala poop. 
sure. Rolls off the tongue. Do I know what this thing looks like? Make me a religion check. A f- natural one. Natural <laughs> one. Like <laughs> Jinji, uh, based on the totems <laughs> you've seen, it could be anything. <laughs> Not even Ooh. a word. Okay, no. Are there any totems around here? Oh yeah, you see several of them stacked up, like in the corner over there. Like they just have them all over the place. Any nearby? Oh yeah. Okay. Within reach. Yeah. I'm going to cast press digitation. Okay. I'm going to run my hand over the the totem and make mm-hmm. it glow. Okay. Um, so question, are you trying to disguise your spell casting or do you want to make it evident that you're doing something? Hmm. I didn't think of that. Um, which they may, uh, I mean, they may not even know what it is because they're weird fish people. You don't know, but doing it in front of them would be somewhat evident that you are doing something. Now, what you can normally do is do either a sleight of hand or a deception check. If you want to try and do this in front of someone. I'm going to try a sleight of hand. Okay. Uh, That's a 21. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, so you, you, you mask your movements in such a way that even the sharpest of eyes, it would be hard to perceive spell casting. So, for them... Seems like they just perceive you running your hand along this totem and it glows. Now what happened? <clears throat> it seems kinda... someone is, uh, is, is welcoming us. Ooh. You hear what I'm saying? Which, which she is that? No, it's the one that Palapodop threw out last week. Maybe it was actually the one true deity. Um, go ahead and make me a deception check with advantage. <laughs> um, that would be a 14. You want to use a platy roll? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just kill him. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Entire I'm, I'm basically getting ready for combat, for real. In case this goes south. In fact, can I ask the GM to basically allow me a like surprise action if a combat is rolled? Because I'm I'm basically stealthing to get ready to strike. Like that's literally what I'm doing. Right. Well, we'll see what the circumstances are when we come to it. Okay. If we come to it. So that's that's what I'm going for. Okay. I, I roll all the dice and they're all twenties. Like the the leader's looking at you real suspiciously. I don't think Platy's here right now. She was having issues. We can appoint someone to be a temp, Platy. I can do it if you want, but mine does suck. Oh, oh she is here. here. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, g- give me a d20, uh, Platy. For the record, I have a plus one to my deception. God. I'll take this it. All, this will all go that's, well. That's higher than their insight. Ooh. So that's 19 total? Yeah. Okay. Is that the one you want to keep? That's the one I want to keep. Okay. So... You see this leader just like trying to make this hard choice. A lot of slaves, or maybe annoy Ed's god that I didn't think was a god. He murmurs to them a little bit and they swim around each other, and um, almost as one, they just stop and stare at the totem, and then they all start moving towards the lake 
all keeping their eyes on you just swimming around each other. They seem to be backing off for now, but still keeping a close eye. And you see they, they kind of like step into the water until just their heads are <laughs> above the water and they just sit there watching. Yep. As I move away from the totem, I'm going to uh, make the light dissipate. Okay. Are, are there any other totems? Um, People seem to toss totems and shrines and stuff all over the place. How far away are they now? Uh, roughly 100 or so feet okay. from the entrance of this Okay. And and it's dark. Yes. D do these d does this species have dark vision? Yes. Is it the 60 foot dark vision or is it it's better. It's better. Okay. Natural 20. Sleight of hand. Wow. What? I'd like to think that Mark in character is just is just flabbergasted by how Liam is managing all this. <laughs> it, it must have been the phaserous infusion. Mm -hmm. as, um, give me some of that. As I pass another totem, I'm going to make it glow. Okay. So you're just like lighting up totems as you go? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm making it look like my approach is making them glow, and as I move away, it's, it's, it's dissipating, so. Okay, okay. Um, so you start <laughs> heading your way around the lake. Um, at the rest of the party that's not hidden it just starts to kind of follow you cautiously, although you notice that uh, especially those who can see that far are just sitting there, raining their eyes in the lake, watching them. So, um, those of you who are stealth behind, what do you want to do? Kill the oh! I mean, you still technically could run up into the water and try and kill him, but um, I'm going to walk to join Liam and the rest of the group. Okay. I think I'm going to stay stealth for now. I hate to do it, but I, I think it's the right to call. Right okay. To call. Okay. So you continue on around the edge of the lake. Um, you see another pathway that goes out. It looks like it's been traveled a bit, but that's not in the direction where you are. starts to pick up pace as much as he can as he gets closer and closer to home. Um, and around 100 feet away, uh, once it's becoming um, come within range of the long dark vision, Party, you start to see much more of this settlement of this it's not even a town it's just a village there can't be more than four or five hundred kuatoa here and you see them just kind of like moving around the outsides of this place almost like swarms of fish kind of similar to how you'd seen the patrol move uh, except they're not armed with man catchers they seem to be going about their business they're carrying around various pieces of fish and other water creatures um, dressed in like reeds and other bits of leather that they've managed to dredge up. See the buildings, you barely even call them buildings of this place, are really nothing more than bits of fungi that have been cut down and stacked up against each other. They have draped aquatic plants over them that have since dried. Um, this place, again, just stinks to high heavens. It was inhabited by fish people who cut up bits of aquatic creatures, and that smells. I'm a little further back than I have been mm -hmm. in my stealthing. Okay. Like a little further back, like a little further. Yeah. <laughs> um, and as you're kind of slouching towards this place, you see that they seem to have some boats as well, uh, in addition to being able to swim around. Um, seem to be two-person boats that are made out of what you think are hollowed out tops of gigantic mushrooms that have been turned up on their end, turned up on their top. 
um, and they seem to have poles that they just push themselves along with. There is a group, a school that start, that approaches the party as you get closer, um, and it seems to be similar to the other patrol that you saw, except the leader of this one, about six Kuatoa, is dressed. We could only describe as maybe based on the shrines you've seen religiously, since it seems to have a bunch of different totems just strung around it, um, and it is wearing what you can only guess is some semblance of a robe it tried to make. And they do seem to be approaching in a much more friendly manner. They don't have like man catchers out, although they do have them, they're on their shoulders. They're not threatening you with them. And the leader calls out in Undercommon, um, Shushar, who are these strangers that you have brought back to our place? And Shushar says, oh, glug, 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 glug. It's nice to see you again. Loyal worshiper of the Sea Mother still? He says, yes, it is I. Um, who are these people again? And Shushar just starts going down the list saying, this is, this is Liam the Orc, mighty wizard. This is... He looks at you, Tastin, trying to conceal the Sunblade. <laughs> this is a human who does not have anything you'd be particularly offended by. <laughs> roll with it. Just roll with it. Nothing to see And here. then he goes down. Keep moving on. <laughs> does he skip me? I'm actually quite curious. He does. He's intelligent okay. enough to do that. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, and this, and over there... Yeah, it's, it's there's the blasphemous cleric. Yes. Yeah, you, you kind of get the feeling that he skipped over the whole cleric, it, yeah, on bringer no, stuff. I'm, I'm tracking that <laughs> real quick. Um, and he introduces the rest of the party. Um, and at this point, the the group of Kuatoa have gotten you know a bit closer, and you know, they do the whole thing where they're you know, like swimming in a circle around this. They do the Ewok thing where they pawn you for a bit, you know. Yeah. Well, they're not touching you. <laughs> they're not touching everybody. Um, they, they, they're not that nasty. Um, but um, this googlogoglogog. Uh, see, Liam, you're kind of presenting yourself as up and in charge, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> yes. This, uh, this, we'll just call him Glug for short. Uh, Glug you know, like, swims up to you, walks, swims up to you, and looks up at you in your eyes and says, um, you may have answered my prayers by, you, you speak undercommon, right? Okay. By, <laughs> by <laughs> being delivered to us. You are in danger here. You'll be made slaves shortly if you are not taken into my school. Come to my place. Come to my hut. And I will explain more. I believe you may help us. In turn, we can help you. But we must go quickly away from prying eyes. I'll turn back to the party. It appears that uh, we may not have a choice of uh, being threatened with slavery. Uh, this gentleman, who appears to be a, uh, a, a chieftain of some sort, apparently has a problem that he would like our assistance with, but uh, we need to accompany him to his hut, else uh, we are in danger of becoming slaves. Okay. This is well. true. I'm going well. to turn to Shushar as well. Mm -hmm. Would have been nice if you had mentioned something about this before. He says, Well, I, I admit uh, I thought we would have much fewer problems. Things seem to have changed a bit since I've been here. He looks over at like the village and maybe he sees something different, we don't know. 
So I recommend yeah. we go ahead and follow the man. Yeah, I'd like to get off the street. Or what passes his street here. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any particular streets. Uh, they just seem to move wherever they feel like it. Always in schools, though. Six or plus group. Okay. Um, Mark. So you have a unique opportunity here. So what you're telling me is, um, am I going to jump out and start screaming bloody murder and kill everyone? No, for real, though, I, I absolutely hate to basically split the party, but I really think I should stay stealthed out here. And I, I like out of character. What do you guys think? I mean, as long as it doesn't like go nuts and we somebody doesn't say ham sandwich, well, we should be OK. <laughs> um, you know, it, it'd be nice. To, I, me personally, I want to get to a place that's in like in, in a closed area so I can try and contain the light a little bit more before we have a conversation about what's going on. Yeah. Um, if you want to stay out and do recon, that's I mean, Ooh, that's you might be idea. able to you might be able to uh, scout like a good escape plan. Yeah, I if like things that idea. get weird because they're gonna get weird. No, no, no. <laughs> we're fine. Everything's fine. We have mm -hmm. a very charismatic member of the party, right? We're all, we're all fine here. <laughs> Do we actually have anyone who's a talker in this group? Um, Jim Jar probably. Has Jim Jar is probably like the most. I was gonna say, yeah, that, that's about all we got. I have what a plus one. Have? Yeah, so no, we don't have a talker. <laughs> the second highest. God. What's funny is I went out of my way to decide I wasn't playing a talker this time, because I always play talkers. Just this once, I'm not going to be a bard. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I mean, you're doing okay. It's not like, you know, like people just like instantly hate you or anything because you're not you know, bard. Yeah, um, but no, I think I am going to stay in stealth. And I think it'd be we'll... a good idea to have someone watch our backs because... That's, yeah, that. <laughs> at, at this point with the threat of you know come with us or you're going to be a slave I, I think having someone on the outside worst case scenario if someone does try and I'll say break in to this guy's hut we might have enough advance warning with you out watching oh Mark you kind of feel a tap on your back and Jim Jar says you uh, want me to stay out here with you or you want me to go with them? Something oh, else. right. Ginger's with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might not be a bad idea to have two of us if something goes wrong. At the very least, one of us could get away. That's, you're horrible. Um, <laughs> and he's not wrong. He's not wrong, though. This is true. Uh, yeah, no, Jim Jar. I mean, I know you probably don't like me and you hate my face, but... Uh, I love you, I buddy. Think... Come, come here. Come here. Okay, okay. Hug, <laughs> hug, it, we hug, hug we it, out. it out. We hug it out. And, and he, uh, he, he pulls out one of the gems and says, you should keep this in a better position. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I, I can break your neck in a second, just FYI. <laughs> I'm sure you could. <laughs> now, he back. stabs you in the back during the hug. <laughs> oh, God damn it, man. <laughs> no, it's okay. I got that. Da no, I don't have damage resistance yet. Damn it. On the level. Uh, no, I, I think you should stay with here with me. I hate, I hate to say it. I hate to split the group up, but I think... Like you say, we need we need the extra just in case. And frankly, what I'm thinking is most likely going to happen is they're going to fail at whatever's going on, and they're going to be attacked by the people there. If if worst case scenario, we can provide a flank. You know. No, I, I agree. Um, Jim Jar, do you want to help me scout out this horrible, death reeking land of death? Not in particular, but uh, seems to be the best plan for now. Okay. Yeah, like see if we can find a like a quick escape route, other avenues in. Um, maybe there's like a beholder den nearby we need to know about. <laughs> you know, I hope not. Just yeah, 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 you know, some, some, just just to make sure. Let's uh start doing that, I guess. Oh, I'm probably have to reroll stealth at this point. So, um, wow. not unless something critical happens. Okay, uh, or Good. unless you decide to actively let go into the middle of the city. I jump into the middle of the city and I say, hey, hey! The city, the, the village. Um, so you know what? Just make me either a perception or an in investigation. And Jim Jar will do the opposite um, of what you Which is his better? Uh, his better is... In well, his, his are both the same. 
Uh, so have him do investigation because my int is junk, but I got wisdom. Okay. So that'll be a 14 for me. All right. And Ginger has a 20. What do we got? All right. So here's what you see. Um, well, the first thing you see is the group being led into one of the larger centermost huts. Now, since I'm not really in on this, are they being held captive in, or are they clearly going in? Like, So the, the group is surrounding them, but in much more of a position of protection than capture. Okay, okay. Because um, as you're going through, uh, you see this, and those of you in the group encounter this firsthand. Um, the Kuatoa seem to have no real sense of personal space once you get near a school like we'll just like just shoot past you um so you're getting you know brushed occasionally the uh school that came up to protect you and escort you kind of tries to bump them away but you know come get through eventually you're obviously a great beacon of attention because mm. you stand out like a sore thumb um okay. there are almost a hundred Kuatoa just like swarming around you as you go through, almost creating a ring around you as you hear all sorts of chatter and under common about what's happening. You hear uh, brief snippets of, are they here for the deep mud of there? Are they traitors? Are they soldiers? What are they? Um, and most of it just seems to be curiosity, but you do hear some angry mutterings, and some of them are directed at Shushar. You hear people curse him as a heretic. Then you hear other people saying that he's a holy man. Um, Pastin, you think a couple of them have caught on that you may be a cleric of some deity. Um, and they're muttering about what in the world that could possibly be because they don't recognize it. There's a bunch of chatter. Eventually, you make your way to a large hut, which seems to be almost directly opposite to another large hut. Um, and the one opposite to you has some very obvious guards at the front of it. And you see that there is a dead, but still fresh, um, weird octopus hanging on the door that is just dripping this goop from it. Um, that's not the one you're going into. But the guards over there stared dagger at you as you go into the hut of your quote-unquote friend. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, Mark and Jim Jar, here are the things that you notice as you do a scouting while this is happening. That It takes at least 10 minutes to get through all this walking slowly. So there is ways of escape. The way you came, the other route out, which seems to at least have been traveled a bit. Maybe it's a trade route. You do also think that there are enough boats here to ferry your party further down the lake, wherever that may go. Um, getting out of the hut that they're going into, not particularly hard. Um, this place is very chaotic, but also very open. Um, so there's very little places to hide, but same time, you can basically run in any direction and fairly unimpeded. It's the actual creatures that will present a problem. Um, a couple other things you see, there is a, they obviously have some sort of trade here because you see a market there of some sort. Um, they have what looks like some goods that are not of Kuatoa origin there. Um, and they have a fairly large amount. Um, you think that some of the boats are large enough that they could possibly do trading on the lake, so there may be another lakeside uh, settlement somewhere down there that will someplace you could go. Okay, R quick question. At the mm -hmm. trading area, are there any species other than them? You don't see any right now. Um, this just is, seems to be like pure Kuatoa, as far as you can tell. Is now, there... there could okay. be buildings that they're in. Well, my backup question before I give away my position is, are, do any of them... Like, I'm, I'm guessing the answer is no, and you can just tell me no, but do any of them look like they're from a different tribe? Different markings, oh. different mm. garb, different colors, different flag? Uh, make a nature check, and Jim Jarwell as well. Nature. No, Jim Jarwell will give you advantage on this. 
Um, well, I'm going to need it because that's going to be a plus zero. But I rolled a 17. Five advantage. Uh, that's the three. I think I'll stick with a 17. Okay. <laughs> uh, so most of these Kuatoa, with the exception of just a handful that you see, which mm -hmm. and the only reason you see those is because they're in their own school, all have very similar markings, very similar probably origin. Um, there's a couple of them that you're like, yeah, they probably didn't grow up around here. You know, maybe different ancestors, but nothing that really sticks out. Okay. All right. Um, I, I turned to Jim Jarn. I'm like, so I don't know about you. I'm thinking uh, not the boat, not the lake. I'm thinking we should actually probably just bail the way we came in. What are you thinking, Jim Jarn? Uh, well, you're wrong, Stab. Oh. <laughs> That's really going to depend on the situation. Uh, so here's my thoughts. We can go back the way we came, but we really have nowhere to go once we actually get out of here. True. At the very least, if we got in the lake, we know we are eventually going to reach some sort of settlement. So which the is GM not is Kuatoa. telling me I should go to the lake. Huh? No, I'm saying you can go either way you want. <laughs> so what you're saying? <laughs> I'm saying there's risks and rewards both directions. Got it. Lake it is. All right. I understand. I obey, Master. <laughs> um, all right, Lake. No, for real, though. Lake. That sounds horrible. Um, why don't we... Is it within the realm of possibility to steal a boat? E yeah. Okay. Why don't we head in that direction? Let's not steal one now, but like, let's like start mapping out how we're going to do that and maybe spend enough time planning it that we'll get a, a bonus to our role when we do it, okay? Okay. You're doing that. And meanwhile, yeah. back in the hut, um, you come in the, Yes, Liam? So I rolled another natural 20. I'm okay. wasting these. Oh, God. Another stealth. Okay. Press the digitation. <laughs> As we're passing by the guards with that thing that's stuck to the door. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cause it to basically take a breath and then sigh. Okay. <laughs> B um, basically the death breath, as it were. Okay. Okay, so you do that, and the guards and any, everyone nearby goes completely ballistic. <laughs> <laughs> they start screaming, and they say, Lamagagon! Lamagagon! And... Oh, God. What you are I... ushered quickly into the hut as an absolute riot starts outside. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. As you just hear, just hear, as... Other schools just beat the sides of the hut as you just hear all of these creatures chanting, Lamagagagon lives! Lamagagagon lives! What have I done? <laughs> subtle, man. Real subtle. <laughs> I'm come. Yeah, I'm back here like super stealth, you know, <laughs> trying to get an escape yeah. route. You're just like, behold, I am your new god. I'm waiting yeah, like for you, that final you step. You don't know what yeah. triggered it, but you see from the outside something happens, and there's this incredible ruckus from the center where the party has just gone into the hut. Um, there is hundreds of Kuotoa just swarming, shouting Lama, some variation of Lamagagagon um, as they just swirl in this large mass around a large hut in the center. So it's gonna be really easy to steal a boat now. <laughs> <laughs> Since no one's at the shoreline. Yeah. Um you go into this this hut, uh Tastin and Liam, and you see inside this hut there is it's tall enough that it has a statue inside. You see it's carved out of some sort of driftwoody like mushroom, you guess. Um, and it's in the rough shape of like this humanoid female. Um, but its head and its forearms are created out of this severed head and claws of, we can assume, some flawed aquatic creature like a crayfish or something. 
and you see that the parts are all lashed together with aquatic plants. It stinks the high heavens. There are shells and stones and all sorts of stuff just piled at the statue's feet and offering. There's like guards. It's got four guards around it um, who seem to nod in reverence as this escort of yours comes in here with you. And he looks rather worried, this, uh, this Glug individual. And he, he looks at you, at uh, Liam, at Tastin, and he goes over to one of the people guarding your statue. And he says, uh, Father, I, I fear that something terrible has happened. It seems that the worshippers of the Deep Father have gone into some sort of frenzy. I, I thought that the ritual was to take place much later today, but I think they have started now. And he turns to both Liam and Tast and says, Don't think that um, uh, you have much danger of becoming slaves now. Um, I would be much more worried about sacrifices. You yep, should stay in coming. here. So what was it that you were uh, asking for help for? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, to be honest, I, I don't, I do not know if it is possible now. Um, for I was to, I was going to present you with an offer for you to present yourselves as, well, uh, tokens of peace and reconciliation to the archpriestess or archpriest of the deep father who is just across from us but not quite sure if that will work now i i'd wanted you to try and get into the hut and you know to, to put it bluntly slay the archpriest or the sea mother and he points to the statue um We'll see uh, no other gods before her, especially not made up deep father. May still be possible, but they seem to be in some sort of frenzy now. I don't know. My ultimate goal is to disband that cult. So you were wanting us to kill someone for you? I was. Well, I still am, yes. I always want you to kill people. <laughs> if only there was someone here who wanted to do a murder. Listen, I'm not a murderous person. Oh, I'm not there. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, how, how closed off is this hut? Um, it basically just has the door on it. And it doesn't seem to have any windows, although you probably could break through any of these walls fairly easily. So I'm going to unwrap and take the cloak off the sword. Mm -hmm. Oh! Oh, oh see, brother, all, like, all the guards just go, oh! Dombringer says, we should cleanse this place immediately. Whoa, 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 okay, hold on. And it gets Again. brighter. We're, we're keeping that as an option B. This place is evil. Like all of it? Yes. Yeah, like, how would you know? I, I'm sorry, I'm not there. <laughs> it is tainted with the scent of demons. No marks outside the... the, the I'm town. sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> it is much Although, worse. Actually, for real... And and I was actually going to ask you this off camera, but I'll ask you it now since it just became relevant. Do I have any kind of demon sense, like vague sort of, you know, given what's happened to me? Like sensing um, of demons, basically? I mean, if you do, you haven't encountered it yet. You have a medallion that, that vibrates when there's monsters Dude, around. that would be yeah. awesome, but <laughs> no. I mean, you haven't been like next to a demon to figure it out, so... Yeah. Hey. Do I feel any different tonight <laughs> now than I did earlier? I mean, 
in many ways, but unfortunately, <laughs> just... you have no way of knowing right now. Ugh. I'm fine. Um. Anyway, so they, these Kuwaito don't seem to like a, a, a holy sun sword being brought out in front of them. Um, mainly because it hurts their eyes. Okay, I will rewrap on Bringer. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, <boy>. No, no! <laughs> Just move! Yes, uh, the, the, the older Kuwaito that um, your escort brought you in and talked to you kind of comes forward and says, what, what manner of Blasphemy have you brought into this place? Can okay. We please just kill all these people. Is that a thing we can do? Like so look. There's a none of you have been above ground, have you? What what? Oh boy. No, I'm just kidding. We know what we know what above ground is. Okay, this is like oh great. <laughs> Man, this is gonna be a long, long day. Let me start at the beginning. No. Understandably, the sunlight hurts our eyes. We have okay. no reason to go above ground. This sword is basically made of sunlight. Poor decision. Hmm. Not in your part, but whoever made it. Why not make it of something practical like claws? He points at the statue. Like data claws? Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gets that gets a shake of the head. <laughs> um look. And he, he kind of like motions towards like the frenzy outside and says, I don't know why they have st been stirred up, but I promise you this protection and rewards if you slay their high priest. So will a frenzy like this typically go on for a bit and then die down once they've you know, worn themselves out? Yes, but there's no telling what they may do during it. Okay, well. You hear the more chants outside, and it sounds like the crowd is starting to move away a little bit. Those of you outside can see that the crowd seems to have gathered several materials. Um, they are hoisting over their head uh, what seem to be stylized poles, um, a carcass of what looks like a manta ray and an octopus. Um, one of them has a gigantic uh, metal bowl. Um, and many of them are carrying stones, and they seem to be moving them through the crowd and building a large altar using them next to the hut outside. Congratulations, Guido. You're the latest god for these people. Well played. Mm. Of like 57. You're the 137th god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you don't think it's the Guido. They're all <laughs> continuing to chant uh, there the Mogo God. There can only one. Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Kurgan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are good. <laughs> oh, actually, Preston, yeah. you do recognize religious chanting is starting to break into that as uh, they're doing whatever they are outside. Okay. So, quick huddle up with the group here. Are we planning to do this? Or are we just like saying so long, Shushar? Glad you made it home, and we're moving on and pretending none of this happened. Good question. I'm not there though. Because this ends one of three ways: either we leave, or we ascend this entire town. That they embrace in Kalimvor, or we embrace a small grouping to Kalimvor. Bonus option. We oh. embrace people to Bahamut. It's implied. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a second, it's a little clause at the end. Yeah. Also, um... the chant changes. 
Oh boy. There's now no longer Umogogon, but you hear a small group start doing Hemeth, Hemeth. And they all join in Hemeth, 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 Hemeth. And you see a big portion of the crowd go to one of the smaller huts and start shaking it, shaking it until it just falls apart. And you hear curses in Dwarven as they drag this the draggled Dwargar start stripping him of his wares and passing him through the crowd towards the altar as okay, he screams and shouts. We need to shouts. invade here. Like, okay. Are you guys seeing this too? People in the hut? You can hear it if you want to crack open the door. You can tell you what's going on, but... I mean, are you... So I, I'll crack open the door to take a look, but also, like, what does the high priest that we're with say about that? Since their chanting's changed. He doesn't seem to be opposed to it. He's this just, all seems normal. Do what you will. Go, go with the flow, man. <laughs> That's, so are we just going to be okay with sacrifices and possible slavery, then? I mean, I'm not there. Quick and lore reality check. The... Can we kill the whole town? Are the are this is this just like chaotic evil and obvious and that like this like background morality check that me as a player is having is completely worthless and moot. Like I should be thinking of ways to just mow down as many of these fools as possible. I mean that's 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 up to you. This is obviously some like are they just goblins? Dark like god kind level? of stuff. Okay, are they just like goblins? Basically, that same level of like they're eh. just inherently evil. It doesn't seem to be that they're inherently evil. Okay. But, but this, evil. these particular groups are definitely doing... This particular group outside is definitely doing some evil stuff. Yeah, okay. can we just... I mean, I, I gotta be real. My character's going to intervene in that. Yeah, well, they drag a dwarf off to presumably get... Yeah, yeah, yeah they're sacrificed. like ripping his stuff off and sacrificing... Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna abandon my stealth and jump in there and try to save him. And that may lead to a brawl with the entire village, so... Okay, so... <laughs> I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go out there, and basically, as I turn to the rest of the group, and I'm gonna go. I I can't stand by while this person gets sacrificed. Um, if you intervene, you'll be considered a threat. Uh, High priest says, "Do what you will. They will not intervene, especially if you strike at the deep father." Okay. Matter of fact, we may help you if the opportunity presents itself. You push open the door? Oh, Liam, yes. What was that thing nailed to? Uh, the thing you saw coming in? The, the thing that I made breathe. Oh, uh, it, was, it was nailed to the door of the hut. Okay. What, what, what is the door made of? It's like driftwood almost. Okay. Mushroom, wood. Wood. It's mushroom wood. It's a weird underdark thing. Is it flammable? Probably. Okay. Under the correct circumstances. I mean, I mean it's, everything's it's flammable if you get hot enough, I'm yeah. saying. I bring the power of the sun. I mean, holding a match up to it may not do anything, but, I mean, you can make fire shoot out of your hand, so... It's a little warmer. <laughs> I think our first target should be the uh, the idol. Mm. I'm, I'm just saying that to Tassin. Okay. So do you want me to draw their attention with the light of the sword and then you're going to burn it? Make sure I've got everybody's attention as you burn their precious idol? I'm not opposed to this idea. All well, right. It says, I clear a path so you get to it. All right. Um, it's not a great plan, but it's a plan. Unless you let's, got a better idea. I, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Lupita <laughs> says, you know what? I think I'll stay in this hut. I'm not going to be much use hobbling around out there. Ella says she'll join you wherever you want to go. Um, Top soon, Turvey. Uh, yeah, Topsy says, you no. Know, I think if I just let my brother loose in the middle of them, he may uh, he may kill a few. Well, it's okay. This is Star Trek. We're okay with killing here. Or this isn't Star Trek, excuse me. 
I was going to say, this, which part of the Prime Directive is killing everybody? <laughs> Paragraph um, 3, section. Yeah. <laughs> In extreme circumstance. Yeah. Um, so with Kirby Ooh. being set loose, does that like push him more towards his lycanthropy? I mean, even though it's not a wolf. Loose, so probably. But mm. Probably uh, be very helpful. Comment. All right. I I have a terrible idea. Oh good. This will be fun. But but first I I'm not sure if you can tell me this third, but how much does that idol weigh? Um you're looking at it. Make me an investigation, intelligent investigation. Unnatural 20. A natural 20 All right um so you take a quick look at it you think it's not really modified in any way so it's literally just you know a carcass of a sea creature and you think based on its size it probably clocks in about seven or eight pounds oh that's all <laughs> it's not like it's not like huge it's on a door oh no are you gonna see 3 po this <laughs> not exactly <laughs> <laughs> but so sort set of fire and then see three po it. <laughs> who's who's the leader? Um, you haven't seen any particular leader, although it's stupid hard to see anything in this school. Okay, I'm I'm mm -hmm. going to make it a point to uh, talk to the other chieftain or or whatever. I need you to point out which one the the. Uh, Well, he, he was specifically asking us to kill someone, wasn't he? Yes. A specific person. Yes. I need you to point them out. He says, oh, I don't know if I can make them out in this crowd, but she has a distinctive mark. Know her by. And he um, points to the side of his face, and you see this kind of red stripe running down the side, and he says, my daughter has the same mark. That is the one who you should kill. <laughs> it's cold. Very well. I like that. No response. No response. Just, yeah, okay. I have a terrible plan. All right, let's do this. <clears throat> All right, I'm ready. All right, so what do you need me to do? Uh allow me to get close enough to uh, light it on fire. That's step one. Okay. So, I'll carve a path. Right. You have several of your allies from the party who will be helping you do that. Rot, Eldith, you want to unleash uh, Turby? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Then Topsy and Tarvi will both be going. Tool and Bupado will stay behind with Shushar, since Shushar is a pacifist. Bupado is not a martial character. <laughs> and imagine out outside as this Durgar is being passed around with Mark. You know, Jim Jar kind of looks at you and he doesn't say anything, but you can tell that he agrees. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, this is unacceptable. Nice. Yes. I don't actually want to go all murdery, but I mean, they forced our hand. Yeah, pretty much. And you both start um, so stealthily, but making your way quickly down there. Um, as the doors on the hut first open, and the rest of the party sees the hundreds of Kuatoa in front of them, and the altar on the other side. Hundreds. And we will. Start this next time. I was going to say, that, <laughs> that, then we roll initiative, and that, then we're going to have an entire session of us killing a hundred Kuatoa. And now, but here I was going to have like my He Man moment where it's just like, I have the power, and then just light for days. Actually, <laughs> that might legitimately be a good strat when you get there. Because mm -hmm. if nothing else, the blindness could be disadvantaging. Yeah, a little that's bit. what I'm hoping. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and they're all clumped together, so I can hit like 20 at once with I beams. <laughs> you get a lot of them with that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's literally a line of sight. Yep, yep. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Mjar <laughs> pulls on your sleeve and says, "We're level three. <laughs> Look, no, it's man, not my this. fault. No, no, this this will be interesting to see how this goes. Actually, Mass see which, speaking of which, GM, did we get any experience for the encounter we did over the last two sessions? Oh, I see. Um. Because we hit level three back way back in the camp. We've we've done a little this, mini this adventure since then. You have gone through the Tomb of Cain. You have effectively done the encounter with the Drogar. Right? And you don't have to murder hope with people get experience. <laughs> Holy crap, you can get experience by not killing people? All right. It'll never work. Yep. And you effectively neutralize the uh Kuatoa Deep Father Patrol. Hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, that was, that was good. I was fully expecting a fight there. That's oh, yeah. why I was, I was hanging like, back. And is this going to pan out? Is this going to pan out? Getting ready. They're totally going to buy into it. Okay. And I think heading into this, yeah, you, you may start the next session at level four. Woot! All That's right. One. I immediately take 15 levels one. in. <laughs> um, now this is an important level because if you've still gone like straight through your class, you will be getting your first ability score increase or oh, feat. Yeah. That I've I've had the feats page bookmarked because I've been really debating that. Put it all into charisma. Hmm. Oh, I also get slow fall at level four. And another key point. Yep. Sadly, my proficiency doesn't go up until level five. Yes. And Tasten, of course, you have Don bring her a tune to you. For now. That's awesome. Um, there are still other properties of the weapon that have not manifested yet. So right now, it, it is just a, it is, you know, your standard sun blade, but with a personality. <laughs> Who constantly seems to disagree. She really wants to cleanse things. Oh, I get that I, feeling. I just realized hmm. hmm. Dawnbringer is actually the one with the most charisma of the party. What's Good her charisma? God. It's 14. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Right, so every time we do any business dealings, it's going to be done by the party. You talk to her. You will give us what we want, or I will burn you and cleanse you. I mean,. Charismatically. You might be able to do that. It's probably not going to go over too well with Underdark Wraith. Why? Or the undead. I mean, you know, it normally goes really well when you shine a huge flashlight in somebody's eyes and it's like, want to deal with it. Hey. It works for it's the cops. Like a... Oh, wait, I just, I just described a police stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Sir, step away from the altar, please. Sir, <laughs> sir, step away from the altar. Do you realize what time it is? Yeah. It's after you 11, you're breaking the noise ordinance. Yeah. Curfew. Don't you have school tomorrow? Yeah. you have a permit for this sort of uh, religious gathering outside? Yeah. I'm afraid this is a uh, illegal profane altar. I'm sorry. <laughs> there will be a fine. All right. What's an Aarakocra? Uh, that's a bird person. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I found a... a you're going to make fun of me. I found a page about min-maxing monks in 5th edition. Mm -hmm. And they are recommended oh. so much that they don't recommend ever playing any other race for it, monk. The only reason they're saying that is because they can fly. Oh, so, okay. Monk bird. Funnily enough, uh, dwarf is actually third on the recommended list. I mean, I mean, honestly, in, in 5e, even if you pick something that's not optimized, you're still going to be fine. Not like in 3.5, where if you make a few wrong decisions, you're basically all forever. But that, that is admittedly what I'm worried about, but yeah. It really, it really is. Okay. But not unless you intentionally try to just be awful. I take 15 <laughs> points in charisma as a mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking. I think that's actually it for me. I get an, the ability score, and then I get low fall, and that's it. I get ability score, and then more spells at the ready. 
this is going to be interesting. Uh, next. <laughs> yeah. So how, what, what's our odds of dying on a, on a scale of one to screwed? It entirely depends on what you do. I mean, I don't want to kill everyone there. I think we could, you know, cause mass chaos and make a escape. Hopefully, with the uh, the sacrificial dwarf There's in the no, chaos. No demons nearby. That actually weirds me out. Hmm. Dawnbringer seems. Yeah, well, Dawnbringer thinks everything's a demon, including me. I mean, is she wrong? Yes, I'm not a demon. I am a demon infused dwarf. There's the difference. <laughs> yes, and the Inquisition like, knows it. <laughs> yes, you play a demon hunter, you get the demon hunter stigma. God dang it! <laughs> They're all demon hunters. Oh my! But for real though, like I, I, I would hope. In fact, I did want to talk to you this. I, I, I would hope that at some point I did get, would get something like demon hunter side or spectral side, something. Um. So I mean, there is a. When you level up further, you, there, that is one of the other abilities you can get if you want like a solid mechanical. Oh, the it. spectral sight thing. No, I, I, I mean you're right. That's valid. Although I don't get that to level six. Hard. Oh well, whatever. Think about. Empathetic. I get it. They recommend not taking a feat, but taking ability score. I guess. I mean, if you, if you want to do like uber optimized, then technically. With a few exceptions, just going straight ability scores is, is the right call. Um, but you're not really going to... I mean, you, you get different options with feats instead of just building yourself vertically, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, I get you. So, expanding horizontally, red. Um, a couple good ones for monks. Or things like mobile, um, which increases your movement speed and basically gives you free avoidance of attacks of opportunities on anything that you even attempt to attack. Mm -hmm. Which basically just makes you a hit and run character. Yeah. So it does. Dwarves have a couple of racial specific ones, including one that's one of the best feats in the game. Which is where is it? It's the one that lets you heal yourself if you touch. Oh, that's uh, I was looking at that earlier. That's literally only dwarves get that. Nobody even has anything. Close. I'm not uh, grudge bearer. I don't know where was that. Just look. Uh, that. Dwarven fortitude. Uh, your con yeah, score goes up by one, so you do get a little bit of a boost. And then when you dodge in combat, which as a monk you can do as a bonus action. Just and roll one of your hit dice to heal yourself. It's basically like um, uh, healing surges. I've totally been using as we've been resting for the last two days, by the way. Even though I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> and forgot about it until this for a second. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and you know, actually, and I'll say this. As a demon hunter, I would allow you to take some of the tiefling-specific ones. Hmm. Um, but you definitely are going to check more as a demon.